DEAL to 511. Text DEAL to 511511 today. All dogs are unique. Your dog results can and will vary. Message and data rates may apply. It's time. It's time. You know what time it is. It's time. for Tuscaloosa's longest running sports show. The biggest goal of our team. Especially in the first half. We at Bama, we're trying to be the best. Always is to win a national championship. Something cool to look back on. We don't want to waste the failure. You're inside the game. The game. John Mechie on the ground. Appreciate your interest in the game. On your home for Alabama sports. And Alabama wins. Tide 100.9. And streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. Powered by Tuscaloosa Toyota. And now, now, here's your award-winning host, Ryan, Ryan Fowler. Hey, and a big good afternoon to you. Welcome into the game. T-Town tied at 100.9, 1230 WTBC. You know, I'm I'm almost where Josh was yesterday. Josh in Georgia. I mean, Josh in Georgia was literally, uh, he was close. I mean, he was like Hulk Hogan, ultimate warrior. I mean, that's that's where he was at. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there, trying to pace myself. We're four days away, and that seems to be the Jalen Milrow, right? And I think a lot of topics, when you look at Jalen Milrow, how big of a step? I think it's significant when you look at this Alabama football team. Under Kalen DeBoer, we're going to find out if, if Kalen DeBoer can continue to be that quarterback whisper uh, and be able to get Jalen Milrow to where he wants him to play at with a more confidence. I go back to the first time that we visited with Kalen DeBoer. This was back in late January, early February, and we talked about, well, what does it take to play quarterback in your system? You know, you want to be confident in every single play. Every play, you want to make sure that you're comfortable with what we're doing, with the way we're operating, the way that we're bringing you into our system. We'll get to that audio coming up in a couple of minutes. We are always powered by Tuscaloosa Toyota, TuscaloosaToyota.com, 3325. Skyland Boulevard and online at TuscaloosaToyota.com. The great dealership right there on Skyland Boulevard and online at TuscaloosaToyota.com. Today is going to be a day, for those that have never listened to our show, we do a score prediction day. And this year, our score prediction contest will be presented by Southern Owl House. 1530 McFarland Boulevard. 1530 McFarland Boulevard. Southern Owl House. Two locations, 1530 McFarland Boulevard. And then coming soon on Thursday, they will be opening and uh, that will be a, a chance for many of you to go out and experience a great restaurant, Dockside, up on Lake Tuscaloosa. They're going to be uh, part of our uh, score prediction contest, and we're going to give away a gift card uh, there. And and I have been able to arrange with these guys. Uh, it, it's We have a loyalty card. You know, when, when you go through Winn-Dixie or Piggly Wiggly, or I don't think Publix has it, but, uh, you know, you, you scan your loyalty card, and uh, your prize package will be based on – you know, how many times you've had the card punched throughout the off season. For some of you, uh, not very many, not very many. So we've got a naturally organic bag of pocket lint right here for you. Uh, you will not be getting the gift card from Southern L House. You'll be getting one bag, naturally organic pocket lint. Uh, and Wyatt and I and many others will go over and enjoy your gift card at Southern L House. That's the way this thing works. I mean, uh, well, you say that's not right. Well, okay. I mean, I'm just, I'm just kind of putting it out there. Uh, we're also going to give away Red's Car Wash. We'll give away a dozen Red Roses, uh, courtesy of Pat's Forest and Gourmet Baskets. We're giving away some Daniel Moore items as well. Uh, and we'll give away the, the Nick Saban calendar that should be in, in the next couple of weeks when you look at the 2025 calendar. And then we'll give away a mini print as well. So DanielMoreArt.com. We are always powered by Tuscaloosa Toyota and you got to get it qualified. You know, we talked about the grand prize package. Paul picked up the grand prize package. And then we'll make more announcements, but we've uh, already uh, solidified a lot of what we got uh, last year from the grand prize. But we're always try to make a somewhat of an improvement. Many times we sub in things. Sometimes we give away, I think two years in a row, we gave away a cruise, a uh, Crimson Tide cruise. So that's one of the things that uh, we gave away. But uh, like I said, this year is going to be a little bit different. We're going to do a Southern Ale House gift card. Uh, that'll be thrown out there, a dozen red roses. And uh, you can use this at either location. You could use it at the one. Uh, there in Tuscaloosa, 1530 McFarland Boulevard are also the one, uh, that's up on Lake Tuscaloosa. And man, what a, what a venue. What a venue. But I, I, I want to do something today because this does something good for me. You know, it's, I don't want to, I, I don't want Wyatt to identify this music, but for you and for me, you know, my wife's a therapist. When I go into her office, she has like this couch in there. I don't know if it's, I don't know if there's people actually lay there and tell them, uh, their problems, if she plays like some kind of waterfall music, or I, I have no clue. I mean, I've never been in a uh, a session with my wife, okay? Uh, 
but many people do, and 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 that's good. Uh, we we need the money, so keep scheduling those appointments. But uh, when you look at um, from a music standpoint, if I was going to lay on the couch and I was going to request a song that would immediately lift me up, I mean, I'm talking about getting me uh, out of the out of the funk. Uh, you know, if I was not in a good mood, if I was in a and I'm in a great mood, but I want to be even in a better mood. This would be the song that I think that would put me over the edge as we are now four days away. This would be the song that I would want my psychologist to play. I would want them to play this song. This will get you out of any funk uh, you may be in. Maybe you're in a little valley here. we got to get you out. So lay on that couch. Therapy Ryan's going to take care of you. And here we go. This is the song I think that will pull all of us any type of little rut that we're in. good doesn't it just feel good i mean if you're a nine you're a ten if you're a ten you're an eleven if you're a four you're a six i don't know how you can be a six after listening to this if you're a seven i mean listen to it it should mean something to you if you're an alabama fan you should have a little hair standing up on your arms that's how you check yourself make sure you're not a barner in disguise or something if it means something to you you can't stand still no you cannot you cannot it is it is our fight song and uh that that song represents a lot of great tradition by the way we had a great time uh last night uh nate oates cedric burns leading right into john hannah and everybody said why did you guys have nate oates go first well nate was coming from a his daughter's volleyball game and then right into our meeting and then he had a meeting that he had to get to a mandatory athletic department meeting uh for the entire athletic department that he had to get to at seven o'clock i guess they just do that uh when you look at uh that coaching side of things so we had to get him in and get him out but man it was a lot of fun i learned a lot of stuff but i can't tell you what i learned no i mean i'm serious we uh we we went off record uh, see, that's one of those things. If you go to one of those meetings and they'll tell you off record, if if, if, po- if people are willing to go off record, uh, they're going to tell you a lot of good stuff. So everything was off record. So uh, if you had your buddy out there that uh, told you what was said, uh, if you see any Facebook posts, send them to me, man. We'll uh, we'll get them suspended for life. They'll never be able to come back to the pigskin kickoff. I'm just kidding. But please, please do honor Nate Oates' request because he, he got into some stuff that – he has never got into, so it was fun. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, Cedric Burns told some stories. We, that was also off record. Uh, I did not realize that Coach Saban had an issue at second and 26, okay? Uh, I did not realize that, but Cedric Burns filled us in a story. When all of us uh, had the option, Nick Saban had an option too. Uh, he just had to take care of business on the sidelines. So uh, Cedric... Uh, sorry about that, but he told some great stories. Cedric told some outstanding stories. Uh, John Hanna shared some stories about his playing days. It was a lot of fun, and we'll do it again next year. We're already working on the lineup, and, and for those out there, it is something that we do as a radio station, as a show, as a host. Uh, we promote it, and what we do is we give back to Tuscaloosa Angels, which is part of foster families here in Tuscaloosa. If you know my wife, that's the way that I can make her happy is she loves kids, uh, that has been her focus. That was her focus as as an undergrad, as a master's student, and as a PhD. Uh, her focus has always been on kids. So anytime that uh, we can spend a couple of minutes and uh, give back to our community in a lot of different ways, but really uh, me importantly, and uh, her passion has become you know my passion of helping as, as much as we possibly can. So we we did that. We raised a lot of money. Uh, it was literally standing room only. There was people standing in the back. Uh, when you got Nate Oates, which is really a headliner himself. I mean, he could have drew a room, but then you've got Cedric Burns and John Hanna. I mean, you've got three all-stars and, and the great storytelling that they were able to generate. So if you missed it last year, you'll get another chance. And uh, we're working on even a bigger guest. Uh, I say a bigger guest. We're, we're working on equally as good. I did, see, I did see where the D1 football committees 
recommends that the notification of transfer window in the sports be modified to one 30-day window. That's just now coming down from the NCA. Under the proposal, the window would open the Monday after the FBS Conference Championship game, and then it would close in early January. One more time, one more time, the bureaucrats don't even, they just don't get it. Why do this during the bowl season? Well, why does it have to be in the bowl season? That To me, that doesn't make sense. Everybody else is getting ready to fight a championship or to try to play for a championship. It's almost like, let's see how stupid we can be. Uh, put it a little further back. And I know the academic calendar may prevent you from doing that, uh, but they are recommending a change to a 30 consecutive day window that allows schools and student athletes to engage in the conversations about the future academic and athletic programs before the start of the spring academic turns. I get that. I get that. So, that's where they're looking at. So that just came down, and uh, the, even the possibility of eliminating that post-spring uh, portal window. I I do like that. I think that is a smart move uh, because, but but also, you know, when you look at fighting your position, to be honest with you, I would almost rather have the one in the post-spring than the one in the early part of the spring because let's say you go through spring, you could say, well, I, I'm battling for a job. Well, then if you realize that you're not a part of the plans, then hit, put your name in the portal. Put your name in the portal. But they're going to try to do it before. Uh, maybe it has less chaos in the word but uh, of college athletics. But the D1 committee, they're uh, making those adjustments. So they, they've made some good moves. But I, I don't know. i, I got to let this one kind of like sink in just a little bit. We're always powered by Tuscaloosa Toyota. TuscaloosaToyota.com. We're four days away by Alabama Credit Union. And then once our countdown to Alabama football will end, it will immediately switch over to Alabama basketball because we are 69 days away from UNC Asheville. Uh, Nate Oates and company is going to be one of the top basketball teams out there. It's brought to you by Alabama Credit Union, so we'll segue uh, right into Alabama football, and then we'll go right into Alabama basketball. And we appreciate Alabama Credit Union for being a part of that. Alabama Credit Union, alabamacu.com. Checking, savings, mortgage, home equity, loan, finance, and vehicle, alabamacu.com. Let's go to Mike Dettelier, and then I'm going to play the Kalen DeBoer on, on Jayla Miller a little bit later. Uh, let's look up at the call board. Uh, Paul and Lincoln. Paul and Lincoln, you'll be the first caller out of the gate, uh, and then we'll get others right here, and you'll you'll pick the tiebreaker. So whatever tiebreaker you would like to go with, I'd love to make something around Jayla Milrow because, you know, that's the conversation, right? It, it's how much can he take this next big step? How much can he take this next big step? We, we, we've watched him take big steps. Now we need, if Alabama is going to be the team that we think they are, then he needs to take even a bigger step. All right, we welcome you right back into the game here in Tuscaloosa Tide, 100.9, 1230 WTBC. And we know we have a lot of new listeners coming back in. We take a minute to welcome you. Where were you at during the offseason? You didn't show up for mandatory OTAs. You didn't show up for voluntary OTAs. What, where, where were you guys at? Where were you guys at? Uh, okay, okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. All right, so we're we're going to have some fun. We'll talk with Mike Dettelier. Mike's been talking all off season about uh, how much he believes in Jayla Milrow, and he's even uh, drew some good comparisons because I know that's the topic that you guys want to talk about under this game number one, how much of a big step has Jayla Milrow taken. Mike, I hope you're having a great day. Welcome into the game in Tuscaloosa. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate it. Mike, I want to go back to something you said, but uh, you're a guy that has always really believed in Jalen Milrow. When you look at him and you see him progressing as a quarterback and uh, just kind of, I mean, not go back and summarize everything, but uh, you're a guy, and I'm going to ask you why you believe in Jalen Milrow. He is the closest I've seen to Jaden Daniels uh, in college football today. And, okay, to start the 2023 season, Jaden wasn't Jaden. Hey, he became Jaden uh, as the season went along. First game was a little bit of a rocky road. Their, their defense sucked uh, on LSU, so that was part of it too. But, you know, what I see in him is that he's got great movement skills. He's got a real strong arm. Um, he improved with his accuracy skills throughout the year and his touch with throws. They're going to play to his strengths which is movement and throwing out of the waggle a lot on the move. And um, there's something about him as an it factor that I can't describe or kind of tell you. I saw it in Jaden, uh, and I see the same thing 
deal with Milro. He's, he's got a lot of similarities between the two of them, how they handle themselves. It's been some adverse situations for both. And, you know, both are, are really confident in their, in their skill set as a player. And they count on him, you know, you know, you're the guy, so to speak. And so I got high hopes and expectations. Um, for Milro this year, I, I think he will not be an issue. He will not be the reason why Alabama wouldn't get into the, um, you know, 12 championship, 12 game championship series. Mike, all of these mobile quarterbacks, to me, the what I hear from uh, these mobile quarterbacks is they want to be known as a passer. They almost don't want to run. And I go back to the LSU Alabama game. I thought by watching him watch Jaden Daniels, the way that that opened up, helped Jalen Milrow a ton. He he saw what Daniels was able to do and says, hold on a minute. If I do that, it's going to open it up. Uh, it's almost like there's a hesitation there. Not saying that it's still with him because we just don't know that when, you know, a no contact jerseys, you know, being worn throughout practice, it's kind of hard to simulate some of that game time stuff. But uh, that was one of those games that I thought he really took it off and said, okay. I'm going to take off and run, and that's going to help me open up this offense. Listen, if we were playing two-hand touch, he'd have scored just as many points and rushed for just as many yards. LSU never got close to him. Uh, <clears throat> when he took off and <clears throat> excuse me, ran with the football. But I, I see the progress in him as a player, and that's always important for me, uh, to watch a guy grow into being – a terrific player. You go back to 2018. Was Joe Burrow who he was in 2019? No, he wasn't. He was not. He was a good player. He became a great player. Uh, that that growth period, I, I see in Milrow. And I think it's just him getting comfortable, him understanding this is his team. And, I, you know, I'll play in the system that's going to feature me in doing what I do best. Nick always wanted to run the football, and he had unbelievable success, like we'll maybe never see again in our lifetime. Um, I think what you got in DeBoer is a guy that he wants to use that quarterback <clears throat> a lot more as a dual-threat guy because he knows – the pressure points it puts on a defense. Ryan, spending a week at the Louisiana line camp, 13 NFL coaches there, all on the defensive side of the football, every one of them said the same thing. I hate to play a mobile quarterback. Now, especially a guy who can throw the ball from the pocket. Then, it, you know, you really caught in the rocking chair here of what to do. And now with these sets that, you know, it's so quick. They, they're running these offenses so fast. You don't have enough time to adjust. And they, they just want to catch one guy kind of out of alignment, and then you can make a huge play. One of the things to watch for early in the season, and I've heard this from so many different coaches throughout the years I've been doing this, especially over the last, say, five or six, is early in the season – Good offenses run a lot of crossing patterns in games because the communication between the defensive backs are not quite there. You can simulate a little bit of it in practice, but not everything. Okay, I got him into this point. Now you got him. Who got him? A mental mistake, and they make a big play off of it. Watch this weekend. How many teams and what they do running these crossing patterns over the middle of the field? Now, you can't hit the receiver today. Okay, you can't hit him high. You can't hit him low. Ain't no excuse uh, to drop a pass uh, because, you know, there's just a small target point uh, for a defender. And you see that so much early in the season to catch you off guard. That used to be all... That's just a Memphis or an SMU or TCU or Tulane or whatever. No, it's all across the college football world today. They do it. 
and they catch you out of alignment. But they really hit you with it hard early in the season because the one thing you really can't practice well is when you go to nickel and dime, who catches who and when? When does that corner turn him loose and the safety's got him? Ryan, I'm telling you, big advantage to the quarterbacks. A huge advantage uh, for the pitch and catch game early in the season because of that one element. Mike, when you look at this Alabama football team from your perspective, where do you see this team? Do you, do you see them a step behind Georgia? Do you see them behind Texas? I mean, if I said Mike Dettelier, where do you have this team in the SEC? Where do you have them? I think I think the two best teams in the SEC right now, talent-wise, are Georgia and Texas. And Alabama's jumbled up with the rest of the group of Ole Miss, LSU, you know, I throw Missouri in there. Uh, look at that schedule they got. And they were sure. turning a lot of cats uh, for Missouri. Um, you know, there's probably five teams that are all sort of varied into that point where some may be a little bit better on defense than others. Some may be a little bit better on offense than others. Um, one of the things early in the season, boy, it's been an issue too for LSU, is special teams. And, and how that's handled. Uh, and when you lose a great kicker or a punter, and, and what it does to your mindset that, okay, if we get a to 40, you know, if we don't get too much four yards, man, my, my guy maybe can, can pop one from 55 plus. And then you, you got other kickers, uh, a little shaky. So I, I do see them in that second tier behind Georgia, because until somebody, you know, knocks off Georgia, so to speak, at the top of the ladder, they, they still the top dog, so to speak. And I think Texas, talent-wise, has enough. Now, they've never went through this gauntlet uh, of a schedule before. So I would put those two teams first, and, and I think probably four to five other teams, including Alabama in that second tier, the one thing I got to see from Alabama is the sec- it, what happens in the secondary. You know, you, you lose a first-round pick corner, a guy in, you know, in Kool-Aid who goes very early in the second. You lose a top safety in the transfer portal. Um, yeah, you can say next man up, but we know, Ryan, that, that's not reality. It's not. Yeah, it's just a it, it, cliche that people that, say. That's, co- that's, that's coach's BS. And, and some reporters and people who cover it, they write it. You know, they start to believe it too. Okay, if you in the locker room, next man up, I, I got to believe that. Because I got to believe my my number two, you know, second tier corner come in to help. But he's not as good as the first guy. Either that or he'd be starting. Okay, there's a reality check with that, with that part of it. So I want to see from a secondary standpoint what happens at LSU. I don't think they're as bad off as LSU in the secondary. But they're not as good as they were a year ago. How could you? How could you be with those three signature players uh, back there? That That's difficult uh, in today's world. Because, Ryan, we, you know, we always talk about pass rushers and how difficult they are to find. You know the second hardest thing to find? That's cover people today. Because you know why? All those guys that maybe 10, 12 years ago that would have played cornerback, man, I don't want to play corner. I'm going to be a receiver. I, I, you know, that's what I want to do. And a lot of teams playing three and four wide out receivers, they'd rather be the three cor- uh, receiver than a starting corner. Now, you might say that's crazy, but I, I, I'm around them at camps. I was like, man, you got the skill set to be a corner. No, no, sir, no, I, I won't play receiver. Okay, uh, you know, I, I'm not the one. I can't talk you out of that. I think it is something today more and more that's showing up in the college ranks, and it's kind of spilling over into the NFL. Not as many corners as we've seen in the past. Guys like Patrick Sertain, okay, there's not one on the side, you know, with his hand up in the air. Hey, coach, come recruit me. You know, a guy like Sertain, you know, they, they got, what, 80 schools after him? 
and at, at one point, those guys are really rare to find, Ryan. It's almost like the top edge rushers, to be honest with you. And I think it's getting closer and closer uh, to that. Finding that guy that can come off the edge is difficult more and more today than any other time in my almost 40 years doing this. And I'll say this, from watching the college ranks at cornerback, it is as thin an area as I've ever seen it. Well, Mike, I, I think the you brought up wide receivers and all that. I think about Trayvon Diggs, and yeah. I think about him coming in as a receiver. And if Nick Saban doesn't move him a defensive back, he's probably not going to have the same career. So you said, I mean, these coaches, they know what they're talking about, uh, and I've watched others. I mean, we, we were talking about Rashad Johnson yesterday, who moved here as a walk-on running back, who went to a safety and developed into a two-time captain, an All-American, played nine years in the NFL. Never would have made it at a running back, and he was a walk-on. I, I think about a guy that played his high school football not far from me, um, and Corey Webster. And Corey was a quarterback, a really good basketball player. Uh, they actually wanted him to walk on at Georgetown. Uh, I think he'd have got a little bit of help. Uh, he wouldn't have been just a regular walk-on, but um, he decided to come to LSU. Nick was there, and Nick told him, you're going to play receiver here. Okay, that didn't last too long. Uh, all of a sudden, he tells Corey, "No, no, 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 no! You, you just, you, you need to be playing quarterback." And Corey, man, he fought it, and and he is upfront about it. I fought it the entire way. I didn't want to play cornerback. I wanted to play receiver. He went on to play eleven years in the NFL, won a couple Super Bowls with the Giants as a starting corner. So you know, Nick knew. Marcus Spears has the story. <laughs> When he came out of high school, Nick was, ah, oh, man, uh, we're going to let you play basketball and let you play tight end. Uh, you'll be out tight end and, and you'll play, you know, some basketball. Marcus was a really good basketball player in, in the prep rank. Okay. He spent a little time at, at tight end. And next thing you know, hey, you're playing defensive end and no basketball. Okay. That got shut off real fast. So, and I give Nick a lot of credit, and Brandon Jacobs, uh, who went on to have a really good career. Brandon uh, went to Assumption High School, which is about about a half mile from where I live. He was an unbelievable running back. But he also, man, when they put him at linebacker, it, it, it sounded like a six-car collision every time he hit somebody. And um, so it was Marcus, he visits LSU, and Marcus tells him, Brandon, you know what? You six two and a half, almost six three. You weigh two hundred forty pounds. You actually think Nick's gonna let you play running back? You go play linebacker here. And he said, "Listen, I'm honest because it happened to me." And he said it, it changed my mind. And he ended up at Coffeeville, then at Auburn, then at Eastern Illinois. And you know, he went on to have a really good NFL career. He said, "I don't know. Maybe Nick would have kept me at running back. I don't know." But he said the thought that. Man, my tape was so good of linebacker. And knowing Nick, you know, that's his side of the ball, I'd have probably end up playing linebacker at LSU. I'd, he said I'd have probably end up playing there. But, you know, the coaches, um, and we went through it last week with Dennis Allen. People asked him about Taysom Hill. And he said, you know, when he first got here, Taysom wasn't Taysom. I mean, you know, he was going to be a backup quarterback. And it was Mike Westoff, who the special teams coach, who came up with the idea, let's put him on special teams and maybe use him as a gadget play guy. And, Ryan, I think about it in my lifetime. I can't compare Taysom Hill to anybody. He's that good. But Dennis Allen told us, you know what? When they brought him here, my first thought was, because he said, you know, I'm the defensive coordinator. I'm going to play him at Sam linebacker and rush, have him rush the quarterback. Hey, Mike, I mean, Everything worked out for Taysom. He stayed on offense, but it goes to show you coaches kind of, they all territorial. Man, I want you on my side. I want you on my team. And I, I do think, you know, most of the time, coaches make the right decisions on where you're supposed to be. Hey, Mike, I'm, I'm limited with time right here. i got to get to this break, but I want you to give me your thoughts. Southern Cal got to be uh, taking on LSU 630 Sunday evening. We get college football all weekend. Starts on Thursday, leading right into Monday's game. But uh, LSU at Southern Cal out in Las Vegas. 
All I know is Lincoln Riley's teams have always been able to score points. Their defense has been lousy. I don't care if he was at Oklahoma or at USC. They haven't been very good. Uh, I think LSU wins, but Ryan, I'm going to be honest with you. This is a razor close game between the two. I think it's a field goal game that LSU ends up winning. And think about this. LSU, which had went on a streak of 14 straight regular season wins, have not won uh, an opener on regular season since the national championship season of 2019. Wow. LSU wins, but I think it's really close, really, really tight between the two. I think both of them have a lot of similarities in their style of play and what they can do well and what they can't. And uh, I give a little advantage. LSU's got a little bit more talent on defense, but (laughs) it's going to be tight. It's going to be really, really close. Mike Dettelier, WWL, the big 870. Bobby Bear on the big 870, the historic station, does afternoon drive coming up here in a couple of uh, minutes, and uh, we'll hand off to Mike. Mike, I always appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Uh, enjoy this college football season because we're going to blink and it'll be December, but uh, let's enjoy it while it's here. Yeah, I, I'm working overtime. You know, I got uh, Saturday, Sunday, you know, it rolls all the way to Friday. I get one day off, and then now they want me to do some of this prep stuff. Oh, no way. Uh, man, I got enough six days a week. That that's cool with me. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to college football, man. Uh, and again, like you say, it's the blink of an eye and it's gone. Mike, thank you so much, man. Have an awesome show right. this afternoon. Mike Tatillier, one of the favorites right here of our guest. Mike Tatillier, WWL, the big 870. We will talk to Chris Lowe. We only got to do two guests today. That's generally what we do on on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. It is a Southern Owl House. Gift card day today, Southern Owl House score prediction day, Alabama, Western Kentucky. Western Kentucky does return nine starters on the offensive side of the football. Let that sink in. T.J. Finley, Alabama's uh, familiar with him, played at LSU, played at Auburn. Now he's at Western Kentucky. T.J. Finley's the quarterback. Five starters on the defensive side of the football, so they may challenge Alabama's defense from a standpoint. I'm sure they think they can have success. We'll see. Uh, 31 and a half points is according to the experts in the desert. Paul and Lincoln, you'll live. You know, I must say this before we get started. We're going to do our score predictions. Paul's going to be the first one up out of the gate. But I must say this uh, in honor of our friend, for those who just dialed back in, and we know that we have a lot of new listeners uh, that get ready for college football season. We lost Dawson, longtime member of the game. Over 20 years, he called into this radio show. We've been on the air since 2000, uh, really since then. I mean, he was one of the founding members. So we lost Dawson. Uh, but, you know, when you think about score prediction day, he'd always call in with 63-3 to three and you know, that three points was uh, it's just too much. I mean, I didn't even think Western Kentucky could get that. But uh, uh, I'm always thinking about my buddy uh, Dawson, who called here for many, many years. And he would scold me and he would get me a little bit. And uh, we would talk about it. So, uh, Dawson, uh, you are not forgotten, my friend, by many of us. Paul and Lincoln, you're first up. Good afternoon, sir. You're in the game. I hope all is well. Hey, Ryan. I'm glad you glad you mentioned Dawson. I was certainly going to do that. Um to kind of lead off my call, uh, it uh, it just doesn't feel right without uh, without Dawson somewhere on the call board, especially this time of year, especially on uh, Score Prediction Tuesday, because uh, you're right, he could uh, he could pick some of the wildest and craziest scores, uh, but uh, that that was just him. That was just him, and really do uh, I really do miss him and. Um, Certainly, uh, uh, you know, I know the family, his family listens on occasion, I would, I would think. They do. uh, No, no, they do. I I saw him the other day. It was so, um, his daughter had sent us a message and put one up on Facebook as well. Uh, you know, you, you go through this grieving process and, you know, sometimes it just hits you, but she had have, uh, flipped on the radio with, with her husband listening to us one day last week and it was just a random caller. I don't even remember who it was that brought up Dawson. And she said, man, that is yeah. a little sign, a little sign that, uh, you know, everything is going to be okay. I mean, it's certainly, you know, you always lose when you lose a loved one, especially a parent. It, it's a, you know, I, I say it's a two or three year process to uh, to try to go through the grieving process. So uh, anything we could do to continue to encourage him and his wife and uh, uh, you know their their son in law and, and and daughter. So uh, yeah, it's a 
Well, I agree. I agree. Thanks. Thanks for bringing that up. Uh, Ryan, uh, I guess we, we really, uh, other than that, um, I guess we could honor Dawson by joining everybody joining hands and uh, embracing the suck. S A U C K. That's it. That's S A U C K. Speaking of suck, Ryan, uh, and speaking of um, you have first grader uh, the teachers who, uh, that are really frustrated with you, Paul. Uh, I mean, they're, they're are they? Yeah, they're, they're like <laughs> they listen to these little kids. Like, uh, is a guy named Paul so teaching, Ryan, teaching them how to say suck? <laughs> They just, they just didn't realize that the devil is in the detail, uh, of suck. S-A-U-C-K. Uh, speaking of suck and speaking of the bulls, Ryan, do you realize, um, and I, I know you do because I've said it probably 50 times, um, since we, uh, since we got into 2024. Uh, this is, uh, this is fear of the thumb year, Ryan. You, you realize that? I do. I do. Is it okay Fear. if I, if I, is it okay if I just skip, skip ahead to, to, to you November? Wanna, you want to go ahead and get the Iron Bowl <laughs> prediction? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, well, no, no. I'm just, I'm just saying, Ryan, do you realize the last time Alabama had a five game win streak against the Bugs? Do you, you have any idea? I do uh, not. The year, I do Ryan? Not. I do not. Okay. I, I, Ryan, would, I would guess it'd be Coach Bryant's era is where I would think. You were, you were born, you were born in what, 1978? 70, 1978. 1970. Well, how about 1977, 1978, 79, 80, and 81? That's the last five-game win streak Alabama has had over the Booger Tigers from Lee County. So, uh, but it's going to happen this. It's going to happen this year. We've got them in T Town. Uh, we don't have to play down there in the uh, in that um, in that uh, voodoo uh, voodoo Devil's Triangle down there. So um, I feel good about uh, Coach DeBoer's maiden voyage against the book. Um, but let's let me bring let's let's come back to uh, Western Kentucky. Well, I'm, I'm uh, gonna, the can, can we stay right here for Auburn for just a second, please? Sure, please. sure, sure. Uh, go, go right ahead. Because today's four days away, and I went back and I watched Jalen Milrow throw that throw to Isaiah Bond. And I know that Daniel Moore is putting that up there as a, as a big, you know, and, and people say well, Isaiah Bond's at Texas. He's no longer here. I don't care. Uh, listen, Isaiah Bond is just the new college football. Uh, if you're going to be one of those that never buys a print based on that, <laughs> I watched that play and I got fired oh, up. Oh, yeah. I could not yeah. go to sleep after watching that play. It was everything from the muff punt uh, that gave Alabama a chance, you know, in the fourth quarter uh, to, you know, the bad snaps, the things that the miscues that yeah. we continue to see. But somehow Alabama was able to come overcame all of that to get the W, and it was so sweet, Ryan, so sweet. It was. It was so sweet. Right, and leading into that last play, that fourth and 31 play, it, as the camera would, would pan into the stands, you know, the Bugs, they were so excited. They were taking selfies. You know, they were taking pictures of one another. They were hugging one another, and you could tell they were creeping. They were creeping down as low as they could get in the in the, in the in the bowels of that stadium because as soon as – as soon as the bug stopped Alabama on fourth and thirty one, um they the fence the fence was coming down, the goalposts were coming down, those weeds they got on both sides of their field was coming down. It was gonna be another it, it was gonna be another meltdown, another another rushing of the field. Uh and you could just see it in their faces. They knew it, it, it was gonna happen, Ryan. The the, the the uh it, it was just it was there for the taking, Ryan, and then all and it was it was there for the taking, Ryan, until it wasn't. Until the ball when it left Milrow's hands and threw it to the left corner of the end zone and went into Isaiah Bond's hands, got both feet down, and Ryan <laughs> That was one of the, 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 the photos, the, the camera views from once that play ended as they panned up into the stands, right? It was, it was glorious. It was unbelievable. Now, I would have much rather beaten them by 50, but Ryan, the way Alabama snatched victory from the jaws of defeat that night was epic. All we heard, Ryan, was a kick six, the kick six, oh, the kick Lord, six, the ten, year, the ten year anniversary of the kick six. That's that's all you heard leading up to that game because it was the ten year anniversary. 
But Ryan, what a what a way to exercise the demon of the kick six than to go fourth and thirty one and complete the pass in the end zone to cut their heart out, Ryan. There was no blood left in them punks down there. They were bloodless. There was there was no blood in them. There was no blood in them. It cut their heart out, Ryan. And and it made up the game last season, Ryan, and the game in 2021 was that was kind of similar. It was um, in the way Alabama had to pl- played and then had to come back late and win it in, in four uh, four overtimes. Those two vi- la- those two visits to to to, to Lee County uh, more than made up for the kick six, in my opinion. Hey, Paul, so, I got to get to this score right here. I'm sorry. I'm the one who got you distracted okay. on Auburn. I mean, you I got me started, yeah, Ryan. Yeah, I'm blaming it on you, buddy. Yeah, my bad. My okay. Bad. All right. Let's, let's go. Uh, let's go with the, uh, the, the, uh, tiebreaker question. Uh, let's go. Jalen Miro total passing and hey. rushing yards. Oh, you won't combine passing and rushing yards. All right. Give me the number. What are you thinking? I'm going to go 375 yards. All right, give me the score. Alabama, Western Kentucky. Alabama, 51. Uh, the Hilltoppers, 10. 51, 10. I like it. Paul, thank you so much, man. Roll Tide to you. Roll Tide and roll MAGA. Thank you, Paul and Lincoln. We'll continue with more of the game. we got a K1 to board. Oh, baby, oh, Here in Tuscaloosa Tide, 100.9, 1230 WTBC. We're going to Chris Lowe, Senior College Football Analyst, ESPN.com, ESPN.com. Chris Lowe. Chris, it was good to see you inside the complex yesterday and today. Hope all is well. Yes, sir, Ryan. It's always good to be here in, uh, in Tuscaloosa. It's great hey, to see you, too. Absolutely. Uh, you going to be here all week? You're going to head back to uh, your home? Uh, yes, to be determined. I, I do plan to be here for the game on Saturday. Okay, so okay. Okay. Kalen's first game as Alabama's head football coach, but uh, no, it's um, a little bit hot, but not as hot in the morning as it is. It, is, it used to be when they had these practices in the afternoon, man. That sun's right overhead, so I was thankful for that. Well, you know, and, and originally when I saw the the morning practice, and I thought, okay, the morning practice is here, but with the with the changes of college football, depth wise, yeah, you could put your players through a lot of uh, grief in August. You better not wear them out because, uh, Chris, this is going to be a long season if you're one of the top teams in the country. Alabama's expected to, you know, hopefully be one of those 12 teams in the college football playoff. I think coaches are probably more cognizant of that than they've ever been. You know, you, you see now everybody's got an indoor facility. I think Alabama probably will go in there at least once, maybe twice this week. And, yeah, you, you want to make sure that, uh, you know, you get your – you get your horses to the start line and, and that they're fresh, man. And, and it's, you know, not just this first game, but when you get into October, November, December, and I, and I think certainly Kalen understands uh, that uh, you want to have your guys ready to go come game time. But no, I think they'll be, they'll, they'll watch that closely. And But there's, there is a fine line though, because when you're in the South, and you know this, when you're playing football in the SEC in the South and you're playing in September, uh, you know, you can't simulate planning that heat unless you play some in it and practice some in it. Uh, I've heard story after story of teams that maybe go out of their region uh, or, or get into a game that's like particularly hot or humid and they haven't really been training in it or practicing in it and they just melt. So there is a little bit of a balance there, Ryan. Chris, you were as close to Coach Saban as anybody in the media business. When you listen to things that he would tell you about this program, uh, now it's a new shift. You were here uh, back in the spring. I believe you covered A-Day. I know you're here for the press conference. But uh, give me your perspective of what Kalen DeBoer has been able to do to make this transition as smooth as possible. Because you go inside the building, it's, I mean, it's all synced up. The biggest thing to me is he's just, He's been himself. He's he's sort of who he is. He's authentic. Uh, I don't think he's tried to ever, throughout his coaching career, to be anybody but him. Uh, he's got a formula and a plan that, that has worked. Uh, wherever he's been, Fresno, Washington, Sioux Falls, uh, yeah, it's a bigger stage. It's uh, the, 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 the light's a little bit brighter. Uh, he's very much a, uh, he's a relationships guy. And I think you see that in the way he interacts with his players. 
I think maybe the misconception is because things have changed. I mean, you get, you know, when you're un, under any coach for 17 years, not just Nick Saban, you sort of become institutionalized. You have training staff, players, assistant coaches that are still here, people in, in all the Alabama staff. Well, when a new guy comes in, it takes a while. And I think that more than anything, you know, he's tried to put his stamp on it. But the misconception is when you hear, all right, yeah, they're playing music or they're doing this or they're doing that or there's more hooping and holler on the practice field, which I don't know if that's the case or not. It's that, well, somehow they're, it's, it's not as intense or as physical as it used to be. Well, I can promise you, man, I got, I got a chance to watch practice. This ain't club med. It's not like they're going through club med here. I mean, it's, they get after it, you know, and, and I think that's the thing that maybe when you hear that there are changes or maybe this guy's a little bit more laid back or they're doing this, that it somehow translates to the, the practice field and they're not getting after it. I mean, they get after it. And I think this the team, because of a number of reasons, it has a, a little bit of a chip on its shoulder. Number one, I think everybody's saying, well, there's going to be a drop-off now that Nick Saban's gone. And number two, the way the last season ended, you know, you got guys like, Deontay Lawson and Jalen Milrow, uh, Tyler Booker, who were there in the middle of that. And they still got a bad taste in their mouth. And I think the third thing is now that it, things are changing, you got 12 teams in the playoff, you got two new teams in the SEC. Where does that leave Bama? You know, Bama's been the big dog. Bama and Georgia over the last mostly 10 years. You know, is Bama sort of going to get lost in that shuffle with all these other teams now that think they should make the playoffs? So this is a team that has a lot to play for. And I think they understand, Ryan, the sort of historic element here, that this is the team, the first Alabama team that's going to play without Nick Saban and the first team of the Cavens of Boyer. What do you think the Alabama fans should be their biggest concern around this team? I think uh, probably a lot of what Coach Saban said in Dallas, the secondary. Sure. Um, finishers on the edge. You know, we, you just don't see a lot of Dallas Turners and Will Andersons walking around the planet, right? You know, Alabama's been blessed when it comes to pass rushers. And I don't see those guys on this team right now. Now, guys may develop, Brian. You may see some of those guys come on that, you know, when every good football team has those guys. But I, that, no, I, I think the, the flip side of that is inside interior defensive linemen, I think this is going to look a lot more like we're used to have Bama looking. They're going to be a rotate guys in, play five, six guys, and you get into the third and fourth quarter, you're going to have fresh guys and not maybe have to play and lean on, you know, just so few guys. I think that, that to me, is the big difference defensively. But, you know, you just don't you, you don't lose two first-round cornerbacks, Kool-Aid and Terrion, and then really another first-rounder who's going to be a first-rounder, and Caleb Downs who went to Ohio State, whether you're Bama or Ohio State or Florida or Texas or whomever, and not have some type of drop off. I mean, that's that's a lot of talent to be gone in one year. Uh, I know that they really like the the sad kid from Michigan. You were here yesterday when Kane was talking about guys in the secondary and how he's come on. So when you pair Malachi Moore and and Sab, the guy who's played some and, and played on big stages. I think that's a, that, that was one of the things this, this offseason and this uh, preseason that they really feel good about is, is Sam's ability. And I think Jalen is the other, you know, how, how well are they playing the offensive line? Can they run the football consistently? Uh, I predict Jan Miller has a big year. I think he's the, he is, to me, going to be the guy. And they'll play more than one running back, but I think he'll have a big year. And I always thought he played more last year, really. Um and, and but can they block and, and run the ball and really commit to running the football? And does Jalen sort of take off and be the guy and play instinctively and free and loose the way he did when he was playing his best football last year? I, I'm anxious, or probably eager is a better word, to see how he plays in this system. What do you think is the ceiling for this team? Well, I think mean, the, the ceiling is always going to be uh, to win a title. I mean, I don't think that's ever going to change. I mean, uh, I did, can this team win it? Yeah, I think they've got the pieces in place if everything goes right. Are they the best? Do they have the best roster in college football? No, I don't think so. I think Ohio State and Georgia probably would, would, would tussle 
again, things look different, Ryan, in November than they do in August, as we know. You got to stay healthy. Guys got to come on, freshmen. But I don't think Alabama's got the best roster in college football. I think they got a lot of good players. And anybody who says that Alabama is vulnerable or you better get them, you know, they're gettable now because just because Nick's not here, I don't buy that. They got a lot of good football players. Uh, they got a quarterback who is dynamic when he's got it going on in Jalen Milrow. Uh, and they've got a staff. You know, you, you look at this staff that, that Kalen's assembled. Uh, the guys he kept from Bama, the guys he brought with him from Washington, guys that he had been with along the way, like the Nick Sheridan. And they're used to win, and they understand what the equation looks like. Uh, but I, I do think this. I'm not trying to just completely dodge your question. I think there's about five to six teams that, if you depending on how you look and what angle you look from, look pretty similar right now in the SEC. I think Georgia's the best team. I think they're, the, but they've got a hard schedule on the road, Brian. They play at Texas, they play at Ole Miss, and they play at Alabama. I don't know if they, I don't think they get through those three games unscathed. But I think you may see several teams that are 10 and 2. And that, you know, and do you put Alabama in that group? Do you put Texas? Do you put Ole Miss? Do you put Tennessee? Do you put Missouri? Do you put LSU? So, I mean, I think you see what I'm driving at here. I think there's a lot of teams, depending on who stays healthy. What young quarterbacks come through uh, schedule? Missouri, for instance, has got the – of all those teams, they've got the most manageable schedule. Ole Miss has got a very manageable schedule. So, if that, to me, there's a lot of factors involved. But, no, I, I would be surprised if Alabama's not in the playoff. I mean, I think they're still certainly a playoff team. And once you get in the playoff, you know, who knows? Going back to the injury standpoint, and I know this is more of a generic question because you could say, well, you know, Alabama could be thin at safety, but uh, Georgia may be thin here. Texas may be thin at running back. Is this just something that we're all going to have to get accustomed to because of the portal? Because for one, you got to you got to play players young, but I mean, you could say the injury thing about a lot of teams in the world of college football. Is that fair? Well, yeah, and that's that's why I said a lot of it depends on if you're going to win, you got to have some luck on the injury front and, and keep guys healthy. I mean, I'll say this. I think Alabama and their offensive line really looks the part. I think they'll be really good, but they can't get a lot of guys hurt. They, they really need to keep that front, that those first five or six healthy. I mean, if they have, and that's a position, as you know, that's susceptible to injuries is in the offensive line. Uh, so that would be one example. But I do think the, the, the days of just stockpiling depth guys that can play and are willing to sit around and be, you know, the third cornerback or the fourth cornerback. I think they're over. Look at Bama. Bama lost Isaiah Bond, a receiver who's going to be one of Texas starters. I was just at Ole Miss last week. They lost Trey Amos. Trey Amos who will be one of Ole Miss's best defensive players. But he would start. Had he stayed at Alabama, he'd be a starter. He is a good football player. You know, so when you start losing guys like that, um, across the board, yeah, it, it makes a difference to answer your question, Ryan. I think it does cut in, in and a lot of schools have experienced this. I mean, Georgia lost uh, the linebacker who went to Kentucky. He was one of their leading tacklers. Uh, so, you know, I don't think it's just Alabama. It's a lot of schools, and which to me means you better be pretty good in your evals when you bring transfers in, right? You better bring in the right guys who fit what you do. And you better get younger guys ready to play. I don't, I'm not talking about just freshmen like a Ryan Williams, but maybe a guy who's been in your program for a year or so. Uh, you know, you could maybe wait. You know, Nick was always big on we're a developmental program. We, we like to develop guys. I don't know that you're going to be able to wait three years anymore to get those guys in the field. You're going to need them to play earlier. Chris Lowe here visiting with us. Final couple of minutes here. Chris, when you look at the most starters returning, uh, including the transfers, uh, you look at Lane Kiffin, he's got 20 out of the 22 uh, coming back. When you look at the Rebels up in Oxford, uh, is there a weakness on this football team? If so, where? Um, I, well, I think they'll be good at running back. I don't know that they'll have anybody quite as talented as Quinshawn Judkins. They'll play more guys. This year, and I think Judkins, I think it was a chemistry issue with him last year on that team with some of his teammates. So, you know, I don't know that they're just crying in their beer that he's gone. Uh, so, I mean, we'll, we'll see if there's a dynamic running back for them. But, you know, one thing about Lane and his offenses is they've always run the ball well, no matter who his backs have been. 
they run the football. I still think overall depth across the board, they're much deeper than they were. Uh, but, but again, just like I said with Bam, if they get somebody hurt in the offensive line, uh, if they have some, some injuries to keep people in the secondary, then, you know, they're, they could be in trouble. They're not as deep as, a, as an Ohio State, as a Georgia, as some of these schools. I think Texas has got pretty good depth. Um, so I think just maybe an overall depth across the board. I think the biggest challenge for them, honestly, is how do they play when everybody has them ranked in the top 10 and they're expecting, you know, a play. I mean, if you talk to an Ole Miss fan, they will tell you right now, man, if we're not in the playoff, it's going to be a huge disappointment. Well, you know, how many times has Ole Miss even won 10 games in the season? I think, what, four times, five times in the last 50 years, and Lane's done it twice. So that's quite a leap to be a program that just sort of hoped to be a double-digit win type team to a team now that everybody all of a sudden expects to be a playoff team. I do think Lane's got the right kind of makeup, you know, and the right kind of disposition to coach a team like that. But, man, you get on the field, you know, you get in, you know let's say they get into a game third or fourth or fifth week or whatever. They, they've got a real easy schedule to start the season. But let's get into a game against somebody they're supposed to beat on the road maybe, and all of a sudden they're behind. I think they play – at South Carolina, the fifth or sixth week, that's a night game. I'm just sort of doing hypotheticals. Well, well that Carolina's a tough place to play at night. And let's say they go there and they get behind, that crowd gets into it. How do they react? How do they respond? I mean, that, those are, to me, some of my biggest questions about Ole Miss because they are very talented. He's got the best roster he's ever had there. They got a third-year starter at quarterback. They got receivers. They might have the best receiving core in the, uh, in the league. Uh, and they've got defensive tackles, which they've never had before, the number. Uh, but, I, you know, they got to go out and do it, man. And it's at a level that we haven't seen Ole Miss do it. Hey, Chris, are you working on anything special for uh, ESPN? No, just, you know, like I said, here doing some stories on uh, on Alabama and just sort of the Kalen DeBoer era starting. And I think probably I speak for all your, your listeners. I think there are a lot of us out there who are eager to see you know, his stamp on a program that's been really the standard for a long, long time, what he can do. I, 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 the thing, one of the things I like the most about Caleb is I love his journey. You know, here's a guy that was at Sioux Falls in the NAIA. Uh, he was at Eastern Michigan as a quarterback's coach. He was uh, five years ago, he was offensive coordinator at in Indiana, which is hardly a hotbed, you know, for football. And now here he is five years later, the head coach at Alabama. So, you know, he's grinded his way to this point. He's the antithesis of being born on third base in this profession. And I think, again, I think I, me personally, I like seeing how guys like that fear when they get a big shot, big chance like this. Yeah. And, and from a, from a fan perspective here, uh, doing a radio show four hours a day, five days a week, I've never seen the fans with this much excitement. Chris, I don't even feel like that we got into a lot of the off-season topics that we generally discuss because there's been so much excitement. I mean, like right now, I'm looking up at the call board. Uh, I mean, we're talking about in Tuscaloosa. Uh, this is not a national show. We have a two-hour wait to get in and in, to talk football. I mean, that, it's well. It's, I will. I will offer this before I go. Okay. I will offer this. Okay. He is un. He is unbeaten. He's never lost a game yet. That's true. That's true. That's true. Very, very true. Very, very true. So a lot of excitement. A lot of excitement. Chris Lowe, uh, ESPN senior writer, ESPN.com. You can find him, C-L-O-W, ESPN, C-L-O-W, ESPN. Chris, I thank you for your time. Uh, hopefully you enjoy your stay in Tuscaloosa. We'll see you Saturday. Thank you. Okay, Ryan. See you, man. Thank you. Chris Lowe helping us out there. ESPN college football analyst. We'll continue with more of the game. A lot of fun. A bit of visit with you. We'll go to Henry, excuse me, Stephen in Raleigh, North Carolina. We'll get to you. We'll go to Henry out in Texas and many others. T-Town Tide 100.9, 1230 WTBC. Your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. Now, this hour's West Alabama real-time news update from the Tuscaloosa Thread Newsroom. 
Police have charged a local man with multiple felonies after six deceased dogs were found at a residence in Northport earlier this month. Assistant Chief Keith Carpenter said Northport police were called to a residence in the 1700 block of Martin Luther King Boulevard on August the 7th on report of a number of dead animals. CBS Sports announces its college football lineup for 2024 featuring former Alabama running back Damian Harris as a sideline analyst. Get 24-7 local news coverage and sports updates when you download the free Tuscaloosa Threat app and sign up for twice daily email newsletters. Blue Spring Living Water is located in Bluntsville, Alabama, Blunt County, about an hour north of Birmingham. Blue Spring Living Water is harvested and bottled from a centuries-old natural spring on a private family farm. Blue Spring is an all-natural water source that flows just under a million gallons a day. They have partnered with Waterway of Alabama, and they've been in the water delivery business for over 30 years to have Blue Spring Living Water delivered right to your home, right to your front door every month. New customers get their five jugs for $50, and the empties are exchanged every month for new ones. I know we have it at the Fowler household. We drink more water because of BlueSpringLivingWater.com. You can sign up at 205-602-3426. Talk to someone directly. Blue Spring Living Water can also be found. Mark smart down repair and the future repairs. No overtime charges on weekends and holidays. No hassle guarantee. Adams Heating and Cooling, 205-872-0045. Southern Owl House, 1530 McFarland Boulevard. As you know, it's one of my favorite places. Eat Southern, be Southern, the daily lunch and dinner specials, the great menu that features that Southern cuisine, like the bacon wrap meatloaf, the fish and taters, the biscuit sandwiches, the great steaks, the great chicken entrees, great sandwiches, including the pickle burger, the Owl House burger, the yard Bird, great desserts, and always that featured bread pudding that Brett Garner's cooking up. Let Southern Owl House cater your special. With all of your CPAP needs, including the new Luna Travel CPAP, call 339-8013 or stop by Mid-South in the Northbrook Plaza on McFarland Boulevard. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. A very hot afternoon. The sky mostly sunny, the high 98. Tonight, fair with the low at 72. Tomorrow, partly to mostly sunny, the high also 98. Thursday, partly sunny, a few isolated afternoon storms, the high 97. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. Tide 100.9. For more coverage of Alabama football, visit us at Tide 100.9. All right, we welcome you right back into the game. I do remind you about Nukes Eatery, 205 University Boulevard. Close enough that you can smell the championships. 205 University Boulevard, 205-758-2455. If you're looking for a great sandwich, including the Nukes Q sandwich, which is the number one sandwich across the franchise. Uh, you've got the French dip sandwich. You've got the club. You know what's better than the club? The double club. Uh, you've got pimento cheese, chicken salad, great soup specials, uh, the salads. Those are great ones like the Nukes favorite, the ultimate. Those are always some of my favorite as well. And also the California style pizzas. It is Nukes Eatery, 205 University Boulevard, 205 758 Two four five five. Let's continue taking phone calls. And we go to Stephen in Raleigh, North Carolina on a Southern Owl House score prediction day. Stephen, I hope all is well. Welcome into the game in Tuscaloosa. All is well, Ryan. How are you? Oh, good. Good. It's a great day. Great day to be alive. You know, I, I respect Chris Lowe and what the national people do. People do. They really get us excited about college football. But there's, I still see a theme of Alabama's roster. Uh, it's not what it was under Coach Saban. And um, so I looked it up while I was sitting there listening to Chris Lowe that he was talking about Alabama's roster is not number one or number two or whatever. And and I'm not sitting here saying that it's number one or two either, Ryan. But sometimes you just don't know what you don't know from a nas- when you're looking far away from a national media standpoint. And um, I looked at 247's composite talent ranking, not recruiting ranking, talent ranking. It was updated this morning, Ryan, for the talent on this year's 2024 team. What did it say? And Alabama, Alabama's number one. Yeah, I saw the same ranking. Alabama, the most talented, what Stephen is talking about, 247 Sports put up a composite, and they said the most talented rosters in the country, Alabama's at number one. I think, was it Ohio State or Georgia? Georgia, Georgia two? Georgia two, Ohio State three. And then right. Texas four. Yeah. Alabama, according and, to 247 and their talent composite, there's more talent in Tuscaloosa than any other team in the country. 
That's according to 247 Sports, so everybody has an opinion. Everybody has an opinion, Ryan, but, you know, their opinion is just as good as Chris Lowe's opinion. You know, you know what we can do with opinion. So, uh, but, you know, Ryan, um, you know what, ha- you know what happens when you say but in a sentence? It erases everything you said before the word but. Yeah, true. So when you say you love Kalen DeBoer and you think he's a great coach and where he come from, but Nick Saban's gone, and, and I'm paraphrasing what some of these national people are saying, they can't be as good as they were. I think it's discrediting Kalen DeBoer and what we think he can do. Now, we don't know what he can – we don't know what's going to happen, Ryan, for, without a shadow of a doubt. We don't know. But that crow that you have – Stored up in, in, do you, in do you think I need to order station. more? Are you saying I need to order more? I'm thinking so, Ryan. I'm thinking uh, you might run short after the week four. I wonder if September if 28. We, we do have a lot of, uh, you know, it, it's score prediction day, and we're giving away a huge prize package as we do every every year, and then we do a grand prize at the end of the season. Paul and Lincoln was the grand prize winner. I wonder if we could sub Crow. For buzzard, if we run out of crow, you know, I guess you could do what's that? That turkey vulture, maybe? Yeah. Just, like, I'm just see a lot of those I'm, on I'm the asking. highway. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm it's just a question, not a statement. Ryan, I wonder what those taste like on a rectech. If you cook them the right way, they they can be very solid, super solid. I mean, I've never tasted anything bad on my rectech. So I'm just wondering what Crow. I mean, we're a big like rec tech family here. It's like we give away rec techs. We're uh, yeah. So we're no complaints. Well, and I man. ordered I ordered my rec tech four years ago because of listening to your show, and I now I have two of them. So shout out to rec tech. Shout out for rec tech. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, thank you, thank so, you for saying. Uh, that. You know, I I just think people don't know what they don't know on the national media, and and we're going to find out it. Thankfully, talking season is over, Ryan. And we play in four days. Boy, there's been, we, I was looking at the numbers. There has been some great number fours in the history of Alabama football. There have been. Yeah, you know, from Mark Barron yeah, to St. Paul's. Yeah, Marquise Mays. You know, you've already, I think you already said Tyrone Prothro. Tyrone Prothro, of course. And, you know, there's just been, and that's just the ones in the last 15 years. You know, 15, 20 years. Great number four. So I'm looking forward to Saturday. Uh, I'm ready for this talking to be over with. Um, you know, Auburn's playing. How do you schedule Alabama a and Ryan? Not UAB, not Jacksonville State, not Troy even. But you open up with Alabama a and It blows my mind. So what? Uh, so what's our our score predictions today? It is, it is, Stephen. And uh, our score prediction is Jalen Milrow passing and rushing combined. That's the tiebreaker. That is the tiebreaker. Western Kentucky All comes right. in nine starters on the offensive side of the football. Let that sink in, because we have questions. I say questions. It's unknown questions about the defensive side of the football. It looks like we're going to get somewhat of an early test uh, from their offense. I mean, you got a lot of starters. A lot of starters. Ryan, I'm going 50, 56 to 17. 56-17. And then the Jalen Milrow combined passing and rushing? 419. 419. I got it. Steven, thank you so much. You're welcome, Ryan. And roll talk. Kaylin DeBoer talks about Jalen. Hey, let me respond to Swap Shop Doug Dickinson, Tennessee. Good afternoon. I was wondering if you guys would be able to play the Alabama football games on the app, uh, on the Tide 100.9 app, now that I live in Tennessee. Absolutely. Yes, we do. We do. We do have streaming rights to not only Alabama football, but we also have the coaches' shows, the pregame show, the postgame show. 
uh, we do have the streaming rights. We are the flagship home of Alabama Crimson Tide football. So you can download the Tide 100.9 app, listen to all of our shows. Morning 6 a.m. with Wimpin, excuse me, with Martin Houston, 7 until 9. Wimpin Barry inside the locker room from 9 until 11. The Gary Harris Show, WVUA Sports Director, leading right into Wyatt Fulton from 11 until noon. Miller's Edge with Corey and Christian Miller from 12 until 2. And then we pick it up every day starting at 2 o'clock from till 6. Uh, and we've got Kayla DeBoer coming up. First live show tomorrow evening at Bob Baumhauer. So uh, let's talk some Alabama Crimson Tide football. But it is a free download. Uh, we, we don't ask for a credit card. It is absolutely free. We do... Uh, Every now and then there's a small commercial that you'll watch there. But uh, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, connect with everything we're able to do. And just listen to this show right here. We're going to keep you up to date. Is Alabama Crimson Top Football. Uh, let's go to Kalen DeBoer talking about Jalen Milrow and the development that he's seen so far before we go to Henry in Texas. This is Kalen DeBoer talking about the quarterback at the University of Alabama. Sure. He's he's been consistent, you know, and that's that's what I that's what I think one of the biggest qualities that you can have is consistent. Uh, you know, obviously you want it consistently at the highest level you possibly can, but I'd, I'd really you want to walk on the field, and this is for any player, but I think this is something that Jalen's done a better and better job of since we've gotten here, and it's you know what you're going to get when you get out there. You know whether it's the attitude uh, and and the effort. Um, you know, again, the, the, the play on the field. You know, there really haven't been some crazy highs or crazy lows. Um, I think he's just continuing to build, continuing to work with his guys, uh, whether it's the offensive line and the communication and making sure he's on the same page with maybe protections, uh, you know, run checks or whatever it might be, the receiving core on timing of routes, you know, a uh, lot of communication. I think he continued to grow and evolve, you know, as well. So uh, the consistency. You know, I really have an appreciation for what he's done. He's been really patient going way back to the spring on letting us, you know, just put the offense in, in the progression that we're used to and the things that we see. You know, you always see things that you want to get in, and these are the things that you did really well, and we get to those. We get to those, but there's a progression with the teaching that's happened, and I just appreciate the patience he's had uh, from the very beginning when we got here on getting through all of it and now being ready to play week one. He said the key word, consistent. He's been consistent. We've seen that under Jalen Milrow, but we're going to see it now. You take that no-contact jersey off, you get that luxury, and and that's an advantage to him and against him because there's no way that you're going to bring Jalen Milrow down with a one-hand touch. It's just not going to happen. But because the way that they call it, to be fair to the defensive side of the football, they do kind of call you know a, a two-hand touch there, one-hand touch uh, that he's considered down. Okay, And, and that's protect the quarterback. Uh, but listen, there's nobody going to bring Jalen Milroy down with one 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 hand. It's just not, it's not going to happen. So uh, in in his situation, it's kind of a disadvantage, but it's also an advantage because he didn't get hit. Let's go to Henry in Texas. Henry, good afternoon, sir. You're in the game. We we'll appreciate that, Mr. Ryan. Um, got a couple things I'm going to get off my chest real quick. Okay. I want to agree with with Stephen when he's talking about the the national media. I, I I still don't get – I guess they act like we've never beaten Georgia. And they continue to put Georgia like they are the absolute dominant team, which they've beaten us one time. Granted, it was in the national championship game, but, heck, we had the lead going in the fourth quarter of that game. So they beat us one time. Um, I, I don't agree that they have more talent. We, as he was mentioning, have the number one – roster as far as players um our and all these players yes we lost some people in the defensive backfield but guess what other teams lost players too it 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 goes both ways so we have the most talent we are going to be the best team and he also mentioned what's going to stop Ole Miss their biggest weakness it's Lane Kiffin the guy coaches an idiot he goes for it too many times in the wrong at the wrong part of the game that's that's their biggest downfall they're coaching yeah i look at this team i think this team has enough talent to to go and win a championship now but as and this is the part we don't know there, there's so many different changes right if this was last year or the year prior 
the world has changed right here in front of our eyes. We're going to 12-team playoff. We don't know. I mean, we don't know if how great teams are going to be able to manage this level of difficulty. I mean, you're playing a professional schedule. And, and Henry, you know, you don't have to listen to me, uh, but they're going beyond the 12 teams, and they're doing it soon. So, I mean, I guess we're going to play all the way through March Madness is my assumption. I'm, I'm, I'm being sarcastic, but we're already playing to January the 20th. Where are you going to yeah, put you're these, right. I mean, where, I, where are you going to put these I, games at? You know, you know, put them on a uh, Memorial Day weekend. I mean, where, where's these games going? Well, I mean, if I, I'm like you, if they have their chance, they'll put as many games in there sure. as they can. Yeah, I mean, go but, past um, the NFL. Just go past the Super Bowl. You know, that'd be an option. Make mm-hmm. it, make it a two semester sport. I mean, you're already there. <laughs> right. Hey, is did I hear, is Damian Square going to be the um, sideline guy for this game? He will be for this game, and I, and I don't know if there's been an announcement uh, for any others. I, I have not heard. It would be nice. Have you seen his pregame, his pregame talk that's, that's been out for a while? Yeah, and I, I know Damian well. I covered him uh, here at the University of Alabama, but also had a co- chance to cover uh, working for Fox Sports. I covered a couple of his games in the NFL. I covered Denver and San Diego. Uh, when he was playing out at uh, the Chargers, and uh, I covered a Houston game too when he was there. I think it was Houston. Uh, but yeah, D- Damian, heck of a football player, a three-time national champ, if I'm not mistaken. I like I like this pregame speech. He was just, yeah, and he I mean, that, Allen, man, that was tough. Yeah, man, it was, man, it was great. I mean, that is awesome. I mean, that, um, I love it about these videos that we're kind of getting access to that we really haven't been able to see. Uh, like kind of peel behind the curtain just a little bit. Right. Well, um, heck, one of the early ones was Rob um, McLean back in the early days. He had an awesome one as well. But um, oh, there was one other thing I wanted to mention before I gave you my score. Um, talking about Dawson, that reminded me of an episode. His his predictions remind me of an episode I saw on WKRP in Cincinnati. I don't know if you even remember that. Very, very vaguely. Um, okay. Well, they were they were having a conversation, two of the DJs, and um, they were sitting there making their bets. Know. Yeah, I would not know that. So. Okay, well, they were making bets, and one of them asked the other one, Bama minus um, giving up 21. And the one goes, well, I ain't giving 21 points to nobody. And then the one goes, with Bears going to make a fool out of you. That would be a Dawson reply. Yeah, well, and, and Dawson, I'm, I just every time I'm kind of going through this, Henry, I, I wrote down Stephen a couple of minutes ago, fifty six seventeen. Could you imagine what Dawson would have said to fifty six seventeen? <laughs> well, well, I think you would like the fifty six with the seventeen a bit much. Seventeen. Yeah. Western Kentucky couldn't score seventeen if they played ten quarters against Alabama. Is what he would say. Yes, that's exactly what he would say. Um, but I'm going to give you my pick real quick. I'm going to go – this is my score from when I first saw this game. This is easy money right here. Bama will cover this game. They are going to go over on the total 55-10. to 55-10, that totals at 59. Uh, Jalen Milrow combined passing and rushing. 293. 293. I got it. Thank you, Henry. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Absolutely. Right back to you. Let's continue with more phone calls. We'll do those on the other side. Bubba, get ready. Bama, Nick, I see you. We're going to lead out of the 3 o'clock hour, excuse me, the 4 o'clock hour with you. I do remind you about the standard pizza, the standardbama.com, the standardbama.com, home of the 20-inch pizza pie, pepperoni, meat lovers, cheese. Design your own, the standardbama.com. Full-service restaurant available by DoorDash. Have your food delivered. Carry out available full-service restaurant, the standardbama.com. Dot com, the standard Bama dot com. Jaisha across the glass. I'm Ryan Fowler. More K1 aboard audio. More Nick shared an audio. Four days away. One Tyrone pro throw away. By the way, him and Wallace Gilberry will be the permanent, excuse me, the honorary captains for this game. We'll feature Wallace Gilberry tomorrow. Hopefully we'll have Tyrone on a little bit later as well. We'll continue with more of the game. Tide 100.9-1230 WTBC. Your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. <laughs> Tuscaloosa Tractor has great deals and financing programs on Kubota equipment to fit your budget. Tuscaloosa Tractor, Skyland Boulevard East. Don't you buy no ugly tractor. 
Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. A very hot afternoon. The sky mostly sunny, the high 98. Tonight fair with the low at 72. Tomorrow partly to mostly sunny, the high also 98. Thursday partly sunny, a few isolated afternoon storms, the high 97. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. A national championship team covering a national championship team. The best sports talk in the state. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. Prediction Day, Southern Owl House, 1530 McFarland Boulevard, 1530 McFarland Boulevard. Uh, let's continue with more phone calls, and we go to Bubba, Northport. Bubba, good afternoon. You're in the game. I hope all is well, man. As I will, I'm going to do one quick thing and then give you my score. I want Paul and Lincoln, send Ryan your address. I want to send you some of my homemade barbecue sauce to go with your red tent grill. And Alabama's playing Auburn in hockey Friday night. All right. All right. You go into all it? Right. You go into it or something? I'm thinking about it. I really am. Okay. All right. Talk to All me. Right. My, my score is going to be 52-17, 375. 375. Bubba, I'm up against this top of the hour break, man. I appreciate ahead, you, man. and I uh, hope time. you have a great rest of your day. We'll get to Bama Go. Nick coming up in just a couple of minutes. Homer Crimson, I see you. That leaves one line available. We're doing score prediction day today, and we have got a gigantic Pratt package, right? There's no way that you can roll out the K1 DeBoer era and have, like, just a small a small package, right? Southern L House gift package, right? Daniel Moore, the calendar for 2025. Uh, newlifeart.com. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate it. We're also running 19% off any of the discounts, any of the things there by using the code word VGAME, 19% off. We ask that you would check out any of the products there and save 19%. That's the road to 19, the road to 19, 19% off. I was able to negotiate that with them and said, hey, let's do the road to 19. They said, oh, let's give 15%. No, 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 road to 19. They did. They did. 19% off any of the products. DanielMoreArt.com. We'll also give away a dozen red roses. Thank you guys so much. Red's Car Wash right there beside Southern Owl House. We'll give you one of those as well. And you say, well, hold on. I don't live here. When you come to town for games or sporting events, you could use it then. They don't expire. Southern Owl House gift card. And we're also putting in the Mark's Mark gift package. How about that? A little Mark's Mark. So we're kind of amping it up a little bit. We'll take your phone calls back to Tuscaloosa is blessed to have such an excellent team at the Madison Cancer Center. Great things are happening at DCH. WTBC Tuscaloosa and W265CG Tuscaloosa, a town square media station. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. From the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles. Here's Monty Bolaños. The NFL's deadline for teams to cut their rosters to 53 players was today at 4 Eastern. Some of the moves included the Browns releasing running back Deontay Foreman, the Chargers releasing veteran tight end Donald Parham Jr., and the Seahawks waving quarterback P.J. Walker. The Browns did place Nick Chubb on the physically unable to perform list. The Dolphins left wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. on the physically unable to perform list as well, and so did the Vikings. They left tight end T.J. Hawkinson on the PUP list, meaning that those players will miss at least the first four games of the regular season. In college football, Oklahoma running backs coach DeMarco, DeMarco Murray, who is entering his fifth season at his alma mater, will serve a one game. The risk of landing in the hospital from RSV and there are no prescription RSV treatments. Check eligibility and schedule your RSV vaccine at VaxAssist.com. Sponsored by Pfizer. Tuscaloosa Custom Curbing. Call Paul at 205-331-6823. Custom curbing for your home or business do away with those plastic individual stone borders go for that more permanent decorative concrete border no more grass growing between those individual stones cleaner to edge to maintain it is they're willing to travel not just here in tuscaloosa but also in our neighboring states as well over in mississippi many colors and choices they'll customize for that individual taste and house give them a call at 205-331-6823 you can also go to their facebook account 
Find their page. You can see exactly what the videos. They came out, did a free quote. Paul gave me an evaluation. Give them a call, 205-331-6823. Those around in our cigar selection is legendary. Our lounge and service are world-class. Come and experience the luxury of the mansion and see why it's a world-renowned cigar and spirits destination. I got spirit, I got faith. I might bend, but I won't break. I'll fight the elements. Crimson Time Basketball, NATO. It's one of his favorite groups here, little Toby Mac, as we bring it back each and every day at 4 o'clock. Uh, it was good to he- see Nate Oates up on that stage and uh, was able to uh, to inter- interact with him for a little bit. We sat and we had uh, – uh, he had a meal. I-, I cannot eat before I get up on a speaking engagement. Uh, I-, I eat before the show. I guess that's a little bit different. But uh, I was sitting there and uh, Coach was <laughs> – it's, kind of it's kind of a funny thing. He was eating some barbecue and, and I don't know if you heard me, but uh, – I remember one time he sent me a message and uh, he told me to tell me uh, one of our great listeners that had cooked some pretty solid barbecue. And he went to a supermarket and got barbecue. And I'm like, Coach, why are you going to a supermarket and getting barbecue? We got some of the world famous places here. But uh, he, he loved the barbecue. So Biscuit Bruce, wherever you're at, tell your folks that cook the barbecue. Uh, Nate Oates was was impressed. So uh I don't think there was a piece of barbecue on his plate, so he was he was knocking out. I think he was also coming from a volleyball game, and he had a mandatory meeting that he had to get to. But, man, it was a lot of fun for those out there that uh, invited us. We say thank you. We raised some great money for Tuscaloosa Angels, which is the foster families. We appreciate Nate Oates for giving us some of his time. We are now 69 days away from UNC Asheville. We are four days away, brought to you by Alabama Credit Union. We're always powered by Tuscaloosa Toyota, Tuscaloosa Toyota. Toyota.com, 3325, Scotland Boulevard, and online at TuscaloosaToyota.com. We go to Professor Bama Nick. Professor, how are you, sir? Welcome into the game in T-Town. Hey, Ryan Fowler. How I'm are you, right. Bama Nick? How about you? I'm going good, fine. Good. You know, next year, I think you need to be uh, the headliner speaker at this big event. I mean, I think I think we, I think you could pack the house just like John <laughs> Hanna did last night. Yeah, yeah. Did y'all did you uh, pour you a few before the meeting? No, no, I don't drink. I, I had a half and half tea, uh, and I had a uh, had a glass of water. Um, yeah, yeah. So it was good. It was good, and uh, appreciate uh, Brian Harden and David Harden for uh, you know asking me once again to participate. And I'm uh, yeah, that was good. That was well, good I mean, Bama Nick, I enjoy raising money for local charities, and and when you can raise money for uh, people that maybe are less fortunate than, than you are. And Tuscaloosa uh, Angels, which is the foster family group, uh, I'm always uh, willing to help. It's one of the great things about being in radio that you can lend a... That's right. Uh, not a it hand, is. a voice. It is, right. So. That's right. That's right, Bob. So i got to ask you, though, okay? Go ahead. So I left early. How would yeah. you judge Wyatt and Jackson? Oh, they were they were they were outstanding. Okay. Excellent. Do Excellent. I, do I have something to worry about? I mean, are they going to be able to take me no. out, or, or what are you what are you thinking here? No, they ain't going to take you out, fella. But but you ain't got to worry about if you have to uh, go on vacation again. Uh, one of your many you'll take during the year. Uh, uh let me look, let me look it. at they my let me look it. at my schedule here. I don't think I have anything planned, but uh, you know I do have a beach trip coming up. Uh, Let's see when that is. Let me see when that beach trip is. Uh, it's in January. Uh, uh, see, it's Alabama, in January. Alabama will play on the 20th. We'll play for a national title. And I'll come back uh, and hang out with you guys for a week. We'll celebrate that national title. Then I'm going to go to the beach for a week. Oh, cool. Yeah. I mean, I mean that's I know, okay. That I, right. mean, I, I want to know when you're going to Alaska again. Uh, Alaska, we are going back to Alaska. We are going back uh, next May. Next May, we are going to Alaska. Next May. Yeah, we're going. Okay. Well, that's good, Father. That's good. And, and, it, and I, my job is to groom you. Um, I'm going to let you just host the entire week. I'm not going to let Tony and uh, Brett, the, <laughs> the, the, the shelf, uh, yeah, yeah, the shelf on the yeah. 
on the whatever. Uh, the uh, shelf, elf on the shelf. Oh, uh, elf on the uh, shelf. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna I'm let you host it uh, when I'm going to Alaska. So. Well, hell, that that'd be fine, Paul. But you might not have a job when you come back. Hey, Amen. Yeah, that's what I'm worried Why? about. Why, Jackson? Me? We we might all be locked up. Yeah. You know, and my lottery tickets uh, at Mega Million didn't didn't go my way last night. Uh, it did. No, did it go your way? No, 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 no. Uh, uh, Let's see if anybody hit. I don't, did, use, did I don't, anybody I don't hit? play a lot of lottery. I don't do a lot of lottery. I'd rather gamble on football games. And I got a better shot at winning. <laughs> okay. Well, um. That's yeah. like that score I'm going to give you is going to be the winner, so you might as well tell everybody don't worry about calling in. Yeah. It's going to be the winner, Paul. Okay. Okay. Um, and, you know, I was just reading that the, these Mega Million lottery tickets, there's one out in Houston that somebody bought yes, and they lost it, and they don't know where it is. Uh-oh. Now, now, who's, that, now, who's that caller you got from Houston to call? Uh, Jared, Jared, Jared. Yeah, probably Jared. He yeah. probably lost it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and, and and so when we look at it, that would be my luck, Mama Nick. I would hit the lottery. I would finally, my numbers would come up, but I wouldn't be able yes, to find sir. my lottery ticket. Oh. Uh. That would, that be, would be bad. Paul. That would be that would that'd be, be my luck, Bama Nick. That'd be my luck. Yeah. Well, what's your score prediction for the game Saturday? What do you think? Uh, I'm thinking more like Dawson. You know, I would go uh, <laughs> uh, 63 to seven. Yeah, 63. 63 to yeah, three. 63 to three was always his famous prediction. Um, I might be a little bit lower than that, but not much. I, I think Alabama's going to blow them out of the water. I think this team is. They're tired of hitting each other. Western Kentucky. We're sorry, but you're next. Yeah, Western Kentucky. I, I don't know. I was reading up a little bit on them today. They got, you know, they got, uh, they got your boy TJ Finley out there, up there. Uh, he, he's he's been to more teams than uh, Archie Manning was at, wasn't he? Uh, he has. He's been at three different teams. Two of those. Three. So this will be the like third time. The third time he's played Alabama. Yeah, all that. And three different teams. All that. Well. Yeah, he might as well just uh, well now you know West Kentucky they what they did they win the uh, what conference in what is that conference in? Uh, they were six and two in their conference last year. Now see they've changed around so much. What what are they a part you know, of? Is it uh, Mid American? No. You know I, I don't like no the, it's not I the can't, Mid American. It's not remember. no it's not the Mac. I almost wonder if they're not a well. See they're in with Liberty. So is that the Sun Belt? No, it's a Conference USA. I wouldn't have got it that's a million it. years. Conference uh, USA. That's see, that's, right. So you got Liberty, Western Kentucky, which um, then you have uh, boy this, this is great Jacksonville State Gamecocks. Uh, I mean. Mm. I mean, we, we we move around conferences. Some of these teams change like I change underwear. It's like, hey, we're here today, gone tomorrow. Uh, FIU, right. Florida International. Okay. Mm, no. Well, this is a great conference here. Sam Houston. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm, mm. Powerhouse. Powerhouse. Uh, uh, La Tech. Uh, Bamanick, I mean, I'm not. Uh, then we got New Mexico State Aggies. Uh uh, Auburn remembers them. Don't you guys remember them? Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. New, New Mexico State. So maybe we could put Auburn on. This would be a conference that Auburn could win. You got UTEP Miners, University of Texas, uh, Santa, uh, El Paso. El Paso. Uh, yeah. Middle Tennessee State up in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Mm. Mm-hmm. Boy, this is some Kennesaw State. Mm-mm-mm. Kennesaw. Mm-mm-mm. Mm. I just don't know, Paula. Uh, uh, well, let, let me let, give you let me just say this. You, let me just say this. Before you get me to clatter, okay. then I forget my story. All right, but now let me just say this, Mama Nick. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I think we could line up. What position would you play on the field? Like, if we put you on the field, what would you be? Would you be our kicker or punter? Or? I'd, be the, hell, I'd be the water boy. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm thinking that we could get a... We could get a caller list up of playing football, and I think we could be competitive in this conference. I'm too small now, Paul. Too who small would, to play. Who would be our quarterback, Bama Nick? Quarterback? Probably, yeah. uh, probably I, I'd go with Paul from Lincoln. Oh, you think Paul and Lincoln would be our quarterback? Okay, okay. Yeah, Paul would be a good one. Okay. And then um, uh, we could have Danny G in there as a, as a backup. 
Okay. And then then our running back would be who? Uh, well, let's see. I reckon Bubba could handle the fullback position. <laughs> yeah, as long as we didn't. Yeah, yeah. I think I think we could. We we would you know be simple. Just you know there. Uh, where would Tommy play? Tommy. Yeah, Tommy. Would you let him play on your team? Yeah, Tommy could play. I'd probably put him at center. Oh, you put? Yeah, he's smart. Yeah, he's smart. So you yeah. put yeah. him at center. center. Got to yeah. be smart. That's smartest. Yeah, stuff. you got to be smart to be a center. Yeah, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Real um, smart. I know because I played him. Okay, okay. So you and Tommy do have some common ground. So you guys are buddies. All right. All right. Uh yeah. all right, Bama Nick. Well I don't wanna I don't wanna keep you any longer than you have to. Yeah, pal, I'm I'm gonna eat supper early tonight. I, and uh Kathy and it's not a big supper. I'm just having some turkey pot pies. Mm. Turkey pot pies. That's good. That's good. Um Yeah. yeah. Homemade turkey yeah. pot pies or like those 20 cents? No, they, I got them at the uh, food line. Okay. Banquet. Okay, okay. <laughs> well. Uh, well, well I, ain't, I ain't in the mood for clattering. I know you got a lot of people wanting to get in with the picks. So I don't want to hold them up. I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll call Mama Nick, this is, when's, when's this is one of, uh, Friday, 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 Friday. This is one of your best calls so far uh, this year. All right, Bamanek, give me the uh, give me the score. What do you think? 45-14. 45-14. And then we're going Jalen Milrow, total combined yeah, rough, passing total and rushing combined, uh, is our top yeah. record. All right, I'm going to go 372. 372. I got it, man. man. That's probably too much. But that's, that's the numbers I came up with. I got you. Well, thank who's you, Barry. Who's next? Up? Uh, you've got Homer Crimson coming up. Homer Crimson. Homer Crimson. Yeah, yeah. How about you, Tommy? Is he coming up? Uh, he's second up. You want to say something to him before? No, uh, I'll, 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 I'll give I'll give Tommy a bye. Has he been showing up day. to class, or is this training symposium? No, I, I no, I, I still can't get them in the Zoom call. They won't call Lonesome seven seven two zero three. They just won't call to them. Yeah, well, he he's Sam Bubba. Well, and uh sounds like one. sounds like we got some problems. You know, I, I tell you what, you know what coach does if you miss class, you have to run bleachers. Uh oh. Stadium sets. Well, you know, stadium steps up well, to, up and down, up and down. So we're gonna get Tommy and Bubba out there running and we'll see how much they enjoy that and, and we'll see if they're able to make the class then. How about that? Sounds great. Sounds great, Ryan Paula, and I'll let you go, buddy. All right, thank you. I'll 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 let you uh well, Thursday and Friday, I'll, call, I'll talk to you. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, man. You're welcome. Thank you, Ron. Right back to you. Bama Nick, right there in the game. Let's go to Homer Crimson. Homer Crimson, good afternoon. You're in the game. I hope all is well. Hey, Ryan. Yeah, I'm doing good. I hope you are. It sounds like you're doing all right. I am. Four days away. I can't. I mean, what else could be any better? I mean, my numbers did not yeah. come up uh, on Monday evening, but uh, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> There's, there'll, there'll be another shot at that. It looks like it's uh, up to 580-something billion. You, you guys will know if I ever win, Homer. When yeah. I come in and Jaisha yeah. is uh, hosting the show. Yeah. Yeah. Her and Jackson. You're, uh, yeah. You, you're and probably, they're, and they're, looking, they're looking for me going, where? where's Fowler? Where's yeah. Fowler? Well, your problem might be I delete the pot before you get there, but uh, I'll share. <clears throat> Ryan, I don't get to talk to you that often. I'm glad I got in today, so I'd like to have a minute and sort of catch up a little bit. Okay, talk to me. Um, let's see. Previously, y'all were maybe last week sometime, uh, you were asking what why people thought Alabama might be real good. I did. And uh, every every time I call you, I pretty much remember what I've said before, and I'm pretty much on the same track every time. I don't expect you to remember, but uh, I've talked about synergy, and like the coach and the and the program have got to have synergy, and and I told Feinbaum that when when Nick got there, and uh, and the same thing holds true now for before. So. I think I think we're going to have that working in our favor, not just because of the coach and the program, but 
throughout the team, I think they have uh, a oneness and a purpose. I think it, you can feel it and see it even if you're not on that team just by hearing the guys that we hear from. You know what I'm saying? I do, yeah. Um, they, uh, the, It's accentuated by the leadership, uh, especially Milrow. But uh, last year when they first hit the field, after the first game, they interviewed three or four of them, and I told you that I was real impressed by those guys. And it included Milrow, the first time I had heard him, and uh, Booker, I think, and I don't remember exactly. I think two or three of them are still there. But uh, they're going to have outstanding leadership on that team this year. And um, so their spirit, their vibe, so to speak, is going to be – higher than usual. So the leadership and the vibe blank, I guess you could say also that that's uniting those guys. They are going to, uh, to have an advantage over any position they've had before because of that, all those elements, including the fact that it's a new, you know, a new start. So, uh, you know, when the dogs come into town, they don't know what hit, what hit them. Um, as far as my score, Ryan, I appreciate that uh, Dawson's already made his pick. I was I was thinking about sixty six to three, but uh, since he's got that taken care of, well, and, I'll modify and, mine a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we were just kind of throwing out what he what we thought he would pick. I mean, this has been oh, I'm sure. Yeah, sixty six to I'm three, sure. sixty three to three. Uh, and then, I know. You know, he'd always set me up, and you know, like I really evaluate this team, Western Kentucky. I'm telling you, Western Kentucky is a really, 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 really good team. But I yep. think Alabama is going to beat them sixty-three to three, and I'm going. Well, do you, do you think Western Kentucky is better than Kentucky? Oh, I don't know. I didn't really give it any thought. Do you think it is? No. No, no I don't think they are. Do you think Kentucky? would do much against Alabama this year? No. No. Okay. I think we're in agreement on that. Um, I would – I'm going to modify my thinking a little bit because we'll probably have the third string in there a little bit. So instead of 66, I think we'll get, we'll get 52. And instead of uh, just giving up a field goal, I think we'll give up a couple of field goals. So 52 to 6. 52 to 6. We're going Jayla Milrow combined passing and rushing. Okay. 65 plus 289. What does that work out to? What does it say? 65 to 289? Yeah, 356. Does that sound right? Uh, 289. 65 minus 11 is 54. Yeah, 354. Yeah, 354. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't find the six, but okay, 354. Got it. <laughs> Yeah. All right. We got yeah. you. We got you, Homer Crimson. Thank you, man. All right, Ryan. Take care. Right back Roll to you. Tight. We'll continue with more of the game. We'll take more of your phone calls. Med Center, Urgent Care, Family Medicine, no appointment necessary. The super doctors who live and work in our community, MedCenterUrgentCare.com. MedCenterUrgentCare.com. Online check in, significantly reduce your wait time. Either clinic, you can go the original location here on 69 South. You can go to Northport right past uh, Highway 43 on Highway 82, North River on Rice Mine Road, Hoover right off Highway 150, Fayette, Demopolis. It is MedCenterUrgentCare.com. We've got to get you back to 100%. The weekend's coming. we got to get you back to 100%. We can do that by visiting either location, MedCenterUrgentCare.com, MedCenterUrgentCare.com. Online check-in, injuries, occupational health, a little bit under the weather, uh, sports physicals, always an option as well. Occupational health. We'll continue with more. We'll take your calls and more K1 Abor audio headed your way in a couple of minutes. T Town Tide 100.9-1230 WTBC. Your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. Tide 100.9 traffic. Tuscaloosa traffic now from the Townsend Nissan Traffic Center. A very happy Tuesday afternoon to you. Well, we're getting on to a bit of a busy start. We do have an accident on McFarland westbound at Lurleen Wallace. Now that is going to block a lane. And also, well, uh, good news, Lurleen Wallace southbound at University Boulevard. An earlier accident all cleared. It's the sensational giveaway that you don't want to miss. Play at Pearl River Resort and walk away a 
winner. Must be 21 or older to play. The Pharmacy at Midtown with T.J. Thomas, 205-752-0627, pharmacymidtown.com. Don't forget about the retail side of the Pharmacy at Midtown. It's an independent-owned pharmacy specializing in walk-in prescriptions, medicine on time, packaging. We checked at least once or twice a year. Let your doctor know you are concerned about the health of your kidneys and ask what you can do to keep your kidneys healthy. Light up those phone lines on the game with Ryan Fowler. 205-342. What reminds you about the pharmacy at Midtown? T.J. Thomas, he's the Nick Saban of Pharmacists. 205-752-0627. 205-752-0627. The pharmacy at Midtown. All your compounding needs. The only sterile compounding facility here in Tuscaloosa. You'll find all the... Normal, you know, prescriptions that you get uh, refilled. Uh, and if you are looking for customer service, now, if you enjoy driving around the building, if you enjoy sitting in a lobby where there's a bunch of sick folks, uh, then keep going to where you're at. But if you're into customer service, like where you call and they don't put you on hold for 45 minutes, you got to pa- press like nine different buttons to get to an actual human, uh, then, then, hey, keep going if you enjoy that. But if you don't, and you like customer service, it is time to make the switch. It is the pharmacy at Midtown. It's conveniently located there at the back of Midtown. You will find them at 205-752-0627. They'll transfer your prescriptions. They'll take care of all the hard work. Uh, you just have to make the phone call at 205-752-0627. The Pharmacy at Midtown. The Pharmacy at Midtown with T.J. Thomas. And uh, they are continuing to grow their business. And uh, they say thank you, thank you, thank you. The Pharmacy at Midtown, the retail side as well. It's the Pharmacy at Midtown. Let's continue with more phone calls. And we go here to Tommy and Rami. Tommy, it was good to see you uh, last night. I hope all is well. All is well. It was a great time. Uh, I'm going to give a couple of shout-outs. I think Biscuit Bruce and his team did well. I mean, cooking the food was fabulous. And uh, they did a great job again this year. Uh, the University Church of Christ hosting it did another excellent job. I mean, kudos to all of them. I can't say everybody's name, but just yeah. And what was the beans? You know, I'm a big cowboy bean guy. Brian Harden and Cedric they do a big cowboy bean down at the Hunting Lodge. We love it. Uh, they did something very similar with their beans uh, here. Well, it, it had looked like I think it had ground beef, or maybe it had barbecue. It was very good. It was super good. Yeah, it was really, really yeah. good. Yeah, really, you can make the meal off of that. I mean, Roll that how good tide. it was. I mean, all the Roll food. Tide. Yep, yeah, it was. I man, mean, it was. It was the really. It was great. I mean, well, they I mean, they made me a plate. Uh, I mean, I may be the only one that left there with a doggy bag, but I did. Well, yeah, you kind of got it off that quick. We won't talk about that. Yeah, you abandoned me again, but I'm not going to mention that. I'm going to be positive. Talk about that. Uh, the, you did a good job hosting. Thank Coach Nate Oak. The now, little time he now had. Tommy, it has been brought to my attention, though. Uh-oh. Even though we said everything was off record, I noticed on your Facebook account you were putting up photos and videos and all kind of things. Uh Barbecue recipe, yeah, yeah. I did a lot. I yeah. Mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, we said this was off record, and then here you go putting it all over Facebook, Tommy. Well, you can find it on my Facebook. You're a good, you're a good hacker. I give you a lot of credit. You have done something that AT and T haven't done in freaking mm-hmm. eight and a half years. You just want to get me fired up, don't you? About AT and T, you're evil, Ron Fowler. I was going to be positive and talk about you in a nice way. But no, you and at t are evil. Well, Come I mean, I, I just found your Facebook account. I mean, it's something new. Uh, so, Which one? The one with the gray picture of my face blocked out? The black one or the the blue one or the one where I have fangs in my mouth? Which one did you find? Uh, kind of a lot of resemblance to you and the devil. It's kind of like okay. that, that well, look. thank you. Yeah. I think that is a perfect compliment, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the fang one, yeah. Right. But I am impressed that you were able to sign up for Facebook. Uh, that's that's big. Well, sure. Yeah, I sent it by my carrier pigeon to my neighbors, and they probably posted it on Facebook. Well, that's, that is so I have awesome. Other do that is daughter. so awesome. I know, I have other people. Well, who who took with uh, this video that's posted up here on uh, 
Facebook. I don't want to bear witness against all the new people. Because I did not. When I was up on stage, we, I did not see one person pick up their phone. Not one. No. No. Phones are down. Phone was in the pocket. Have my respect. People don't understand outside of Tulsa. Yeah, we were, we were being good. I mean, we, we were. No, people don't and, understand what we got here at this moment. I told you the other day. I'll tell you, man, Nate Oates got me fired up. I mean, listen to him talk. We are in another golden age of Alabama sports. People don't realize that the national media and some local ones in the state or in the southeast is not grasping what's getting ready to happen. And I'm going to give you a heads up. We got two of the best coaches, one in football, one in basketball. They want to be here, and I think they complement each other so well. As a matter of fact, Nate Oates, this is going to sound crazy, is taking pressure off of Kaylin DeMoy. Because what have we talked about for six months? We have talked about basketball in May, June, July, August, and September. And you mentioned we are 69 days from the first game. That is something. They are going to help each other. And when we do both win the national championship the same year, it'll be the second time that happened in the SEC. It just means more in the SEC. This is a very good program. So I'm looking forward to a lot of great things. I mean, I believe in the next five years, both coaches are going to win national championship, maybe multiple national championship in their sports. Well, we we can't say what Nate said, so that was no, uh, but, no, but 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 but, but, but let's just say there's some confidence uh, growing in this community, especially the 600 that were in attendance uh, yesterday, and they heard Nate kind of talk about his basketball team. Uh, I think there's a reason to be excited. When a man gets three. Of four standing ovation for a fifteen minute talk. Yeah, that's yeah. powerful. Yeah. Ron yeah, yeah, it was. And I, I hope I wasn't encouraging it, but I did. I mean, when I heard him say what he did, I went. I don't know if you could hear me. I'm like, that's. Oh, I heard you. Yeah. but but no. I thing, mean, I wish we could hear more about his time about his testimony. I mean, we are blessed at this university. Yeah. I mean, we are people that live here, coaches here, and represent the West Alabama and Tuscaloosa and the state of Alabama. I guess I'm not going to... Yeah, yeah, don't Alabama. remember. Remember now, don't say anymore. Yeah, because we, we, we got... You got the libs out there at the university. They they get all angry. So just... Well, just, I know. That's one of the reasons. So, yeah, just... I'm not I, I'm saying anything about it. I'm not giving up nothing about it. No. We have got a positive vibe. Uh, I'm telling you, this is getting ready to be, maybe it's right for us. We are going to see some more golden time in football, and we're going to reach new height as basketball. Yeah. I and just, say just, just say it like this, Tommy. I can't believe what he said. And then see that next year, we, we'll, we'll have tons and tons of people getting tickets. See, that's, that's why you got to market it, T. Tommy. You, you know, it's. I mean, you got the exclusive content. Don't listen to Tommy. Just go buy tickets. That's the best. Yeah, go see for yourself. All right, Tommy. Let's go score. What do you think? I am going to say 52 to 20. 52 to 20. 52 to 20. Uh, Jalen Milrow passing and rushing. 347. 347. 52, 20, 347. Hey, Tommy, thank you, man. Hope you have a great rest of your day. All right, man. Talk to you later. Right back, to you, right back to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's break here. We're going to come back. We'll take Josh. Dale, I see you. We're coming your way. Coming up in a couple of minutes, Ron in Maryland. I got you. We'll talk more Alabama Crimson Tide football. But I want to go back to something Nick Sheridan said. And it was something that I talk about the culture at the University of Alabama. We'll do that coming up in a couple of minutes. We're going to take your phone calls. Southern Owl House score prediction day that includes Southern Owl House gift card, we're also going to be opening up Dockside on Thursday, 
Thursday, the official opening of Dockside Southern Owl House, 1530 McFarland Boulevard. Uh, the original 1530 McFarland Boulevard, it's still going to be there Monday through Saturday, lunch and dinner options. It is Southern Owl House, 1530 McFarland Boulevard, all that great Southern cuisine. I've had a chance to go up to the Dockside a couple of times. Uh, I've had a chance to go up and have the fried shrimp. Oh, my, 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 my. Great, great, great place to look over. Uh, something about water, something about eating you know, fish or seafood entrees. Uh, they're going to do it well at Southern Owl House Dockside. Going to be opening up uh, on Thursday, the official day that they will open those doors to the public. They've had a couple of uh, soft openings. Uh, just kind of experiment to make sure that they've got all the staff stand by. It is Southern Owl House 1530 McFarland Boulevards. For all you folks that are coming in uh, for this big Western Kentucky game with Alabama opening up the Cayman Boar era, Southern Owl House, 1530 McFarland Boulevard, 1530 McFarland Boulevard, and also up uh, at Dockside. So uh, the best way uh, that I can tell you uh, how to get there, if you want to go to the uh, Dockside things, uh, when you go to go to Highway 43, I'm, I'm going to give you the generic uh, directions here, okay? So basically, you go to Winn-Dixie on 43, County High, right there, right? So you've got our good folks right there, and then you pass by two different service stations, there's an Exxon, a Chevron, and I believe the last one's a uh, Texaco. Right past Texaco on Marina Drive, you turn right and you can't miss it. That's where that is. So it's uh, if you want to put the uh, GPS in, it's 15129 uh, Marina Drive, Northport, Alabama, right there on beautiful Lake Tuscaloosa, 15129 Marina Drive, Marina Drive in Northport. It is the new Southern Ale House that's opening on Thursday. We'll continue with more of the game. Todd. Oh, All right, we welcome you right back into the game here in Tuscaloosa. Todd, 100.9, 1230 WTBC. Your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. Uh, let's go to Josh, Georgia. Josh, good afternoon, sir. You're in the game. I hope all is well. Everything is well. We're that much closer. We're one more day closer. And talking about yesterday after my phone call, you were concerned for me. I appreciate the concern. Work helped distracting me a little bit, but if you talk to the guys that I work with, for a good probably 30 minutes, I talked about just being closer to Alabama football and going to Tuscaloosa. Dude, I can't wait. I'm excited. Josh, I, I, continue, to, I continue to warn you. You're the only guy that I don't know if you'll make it to Saturday. Why is that? Why do you I mean, because you're just – I don't know if you can Am pace I? yourself, man. you got to take a deep breath in, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe I out. Will. I mean, you're just too excited for Alabama Crimson Tide football. I mean, I know that's... I try. I try. You say I bring energy, I bring passion to the show, and I really try to. And I try to do it every time I call in. I try to do, like, bring the intensity that Goldberg used to do because, you know, Mitchell, our good friend Mitchell, always does the Goldberg line, you're next. Well, I try to bring that other part of that intensity when he would hit somebody with a spear or a jackhammer, and then he'd jump up and do, like, like beast mode roar and just break out and, like, ah, I try to bring that every time, dude. So it doesn't matter. I don't I care you. if it's June. I don't care if it's three days away from football season, four days away from football season. I want to bring it every time. All right. So, well, talk to me. Up, talk to me. What do you think? What do you, what do you think about this game? Western Kentucky coming to town, the Hilltop. I mean, their best, their best player is probably T.J. Finley, him being a three-year starter. I haven't looked. At their specific roster up and down. I might look at it while I eat here in a minute. Um, so he's seen us a couple of times, but this is a whole different mindset, a whole different team than what he's faced the last couple of times. Um, will he be able to make some throws or make some plays with his legs and, you know, run the ball at all? We'll see. Um, I wouldn't want to be the guy trying to run the ball against the 280 pound butt kicker, as Kane Womack says. I wouldn't want to try to run it. Uh, and I really wouldn't want to be the tailback that gets the ball handed and be like, hey, yo, go hand, go go running. And you see this big old dude standing there like, yeah, come on, come on, run at me. Um, so we'll see if they can make some plays. Uh, I, I probably doubt them a little bit. Like, I know some people's giving them 17, and some people's giving them six, some people's giving them three, some people's giving them 10, this, that, and the other. But uh, I'm kind of feeling, you know, I didn't personally know Dawson, but I felt like I knew him through the radio. And they're a great caller. I always enjoyed his enthusiasm. And I feel like I'm going to give me a, give a Dawson score right here. And I go 56-3, to three, and that will 
cover that 59, I say they might get them a field goal. And, uh, I mean, I just think we're going to actually end up just whooping up on them pretty doggone good because, I mean, I'm looking for 42 points a game average this year out of this offense. That's it? Uh, I mean, 45, I mean, I'm, am I saying we're going to break 50 every game? I mean, I think high 40 just because, I mean, because, Ryan, you got to think, if you want to talk about just think for a second, we do have the bull pups. Uh, we do have LSU. I mean, LSU probably won't have a defense, but I'm looking for high 40s, and I know that's a long shot against some of these SEC teams, but I look for 40-something points a game. All right, talk to me on Jalen Milrow passing and rushing combined. Combined, uh, I'll go. I'll go three twenty-five. Combined, it. I'll go three twenty-five. All right. What else is on your mind, my friend? Shoot, I just want Saturday to get here. Really, Friday, because when that bell rings and it's time to clock out, Friday, I'm punching out. Uh, I may have to run my coworker home. Then I am Tuscaloosa bound with the hammer down. Uh, just tried my best not to get any speeding tickets. Because every time I know I'm going to make that drive to Tuscaloosa, it just energizes me. I mean, I don't care if it's See, this is what I this is what I'm worried it about, Josh. Me. I'm, I'm somehow I'm I'm worried about you pacing yourself because you don't you don't sound like a guy that can. I don't know if you can make it to Friday. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you're I like it. you're like Ultimate Warrior right here. I mean, I, I don't know if you. Uh-huh. You know, it's like he, he got out, he used, down, he used rope, all of his energy before rope. he got in the ring. Yeah, yeah, I mean. And that's why his matches were so short because in that era, and here's a wrestling history that I should not even know for my age at 26, but wrestling history. So he would come out, do his thing. He would, like, slam the guy a couple times, clothesline, do his, you know, springboard, not springboard, but his running jump where he'd just run, spring off the rope, and then splat on him. One, two, three matches over. The reason his matches were so short, you know, two to three, four minutes, was because in that steroid era of WWE, or WWF as it used to be known, Vince McMahon, you know, Hulk Hogan looked like that. Ultimate Warrior looked like that. Vince McMahon liked using the bigger dudes as far as, you know, buff, cut, chiseled dudes. And Ultimate Warrior was a bodybuilder. And uh, I watched a special on him one time, and it talked about his whole story. He was a skinny dude in school, but he got working out and started using a different things and he got buff and he got built but he had problems i mean he would run short of breath that's why his matches were so short so and i'm just saying that's a little history for you right there that i shouldn't even know six but. to three josh i appreciate you man thank you yeah, so buddy. much roll tide hey right back to you let's go 205-342-9904 dale dale good afternoon you're in the game well roll tide Ryan. how you good yeah good good roll tide to you I could uh, see Josh, man, being like one of those Georgia fans <laughs> with a shaved head, you know, and uh Georgia Bulldog helmet on his head. Uh, yeah, uh, one of those this, shoulder this, pad deals. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. can see him. Yeah, he, But, uh, but Alabama, I, I am worried Alabama. about I am worried about Josh. I mean, we're Tuesday, and he already sounds like he's more ready to go today. I love the energy, though, man. I love his energy. It's great. If you, if, when you meet him, I guess you realize – you know, you see where it comes from. Full it, it, of <laughs> energy. Full energy, of energy. Man, yeah. I wish I had that kind of energy, but I ain't 26 years old. <laughs> but, Ryan, uh, I want to follow up with what uh, Paul said from Lincoln about the game. So I want to talk about that a little bit. He was talking about, you know, how he loved, how we, we beat him uh, like that in that way. But in reality, that game never should have even been close. We had so much more talent than they did. That was, you know, that that was a game to me that we really did just didn't play very well the majority of that game. But it was satisfying. I'll say that. But uh, I, I think Hugh Hefner Freeze better be uh, better be holding his breath next time because I don't think I, I think he should have got him now because uh, you know then. Because he he's not he's not going to get them like that now. I think now the you know things are going to be a lot worse for him. It's going to get out of hand. I think our offense and our team can. And I know we ain't, we ain't looking at Auburn yet, but I mean, still, I, I can't wait to that game. I want to get through the first uh, eleven before we get well, to that I one. Feel like, I feel like, but still, I I, just, I want I can't wait to that. Are you game. ready That's to say fear the thumb? Is that what you're saying? 
Right. I can't wait. I, I cannot wait to be in Tuscaloosa, and I'm going to be there. This will be the second game, Auburn game, that I've ever got to go to. Okay. I cannot wait to be at that game, man. I don't know. And I just, I got a feeling Hugh Hefner Free should have gotten us when he had a chance. But anyway, Ryan, I, I want to say well, something too about. You that. know what? I think that's why he put everything in this game. Yeah. He does. He does. You can tell. They even took a took a butt whipping from New Mexico State, you know, and who knows, you know, that might have not been an accident. That just might have been how bad they were. And that, and that shows you how, how bad we played to let a team like that hang around. We shouldn't let them hang around. Never should let them hang around that game. That just gives me nightmares to think how we, we let them almost beat us again. Yeah. And we wound up doing like they've done us several other times when we should have beat them those times. I just hate all of them, man. Hate them. How much do you hate them, Dale? Well, I hate them so bad, man. I don't know. Just stomp them like you, like you always say, stomp them when they're down. Yeah. I just can't S- stand all of them. According to Paul, it's spelled S-A-U-C-K. Right. Well, embrace it because that's what, that's what they do. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. All right, Dale. Talk to me, man. Give me a score. What do you well, think? I, I, want, I want to say something, though, real quick, Ryan, about last night's uh, interview that you did with uh, NATO. That was that was amazing. That was a great interview, man. I mean, did you not it walk out good. learning something? I know I did. I'm just glad he's, I'm glad he's so excited to be in Tuscaloosa. He sounded excited to be in Tuscaloosa and to turn down a job in hey, Kentucky. No, 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 Dale, 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 Dale. Yeah. Don't say another word. So he was oh, off okay. record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that was off record. Yeah, don't. Okay. Yeah. That, Sorry that's about what, that. No, no, that's what off record means. You, you can't discuss that. Oh, well. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Out, of, out of respect to data. Yeah. Yeah, scratch that. Yeah, scratch that. Delete that. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, I thought that was a common knowledge of that part. Well, not in his descriptive, so we'll, we'll leave that there. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, anyway. I'm just trying to respect to him. Yeah. Uh, it was a great, it was a great interview, though. They're a great interview. It was. And I thank enjoyed. you, thank you, thank you. And I didn't mean to stop you. I just, I, I don't want any, any more. Yeah. I, I didn't know where else yeah. what you're gonna say right there because he did give us some some insight, and uh, you know there was there was multiple schools that came calling, but uh, very thankful, and you know it makes you want to get behind him and, and support him in any way we can, and, and we're gonna do a lot that. of schools, yeah. right, lot, right, right. Now, they, they were a lot of schools wanting him, and he there turned, was. you know, there was, and uh, he turned a lot of them down. So I mean. He just, my point is, he just wants to be at Alabama. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, he it, wants to be at Alabama. Because there could be some other jobs out there, and hey, it's uh, it's huge. Uh, Dale, give me a score. What do you think? All right, this is going to be the Justin Haynes come out party. Okay, so look out for Justin Haynes, and in the honor of uh, my buddy Dawson. 63 to 3. 63 to 3. I knew somebody was going to do it. I didn't know who. Jalen Milrow combined passing and rushing? Uh, 347 yards. 347. 63 to 3. 347. Hey, Dale, it was great to see you last time, man. I appreciate you, and I hope you have a great rest of your day, man. Roll Tide, brother. Roll Tide. We'll continue with more of the game. T-Town Tide, 100.9, 1230 WTBC. Your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. Tide 100.9 traffic. Tuscaloosa traffic now from the Townsend Nissan Traffic Center. Code red on 2059. Westbound lanes between 359 and Western Bypass shut down due to an accident. So, of course, needless to say, it's got traffic crawling right now. Well, actually at a standstill. So you're really not moving much. And this is going to cost you at least an extra half hour. State Community College, 1225 Sports Bar located on the Strip. And Taco Casa. Point nine. All right, it's Mark's Mark in downtown Northport under that Roll Tide Bridge. If you want to dominate the grill today or any day, it's Mark's Mark. That's included in one of our prize packages right here, Southern Owl House Score Prediction Day. It rolls on. We're taking more phone calls. We'll do those coming up. Ron in Maryland, get ready. Chris, Florence, we got you. We're taking all.